Chief, why do you have such a problem with me? Can we get the real Andy? I would prefer the real Andy. Oh, let's get the real Max. I'll take off my mask when you take off your mask, brother. Because um, you, uh, who's your who's your new favorite YouTuber, Ian, that wanted to to be on the show with us? Uh, the the Madman, <laughs> the Madman, Mad Movie Man. Let's bring on Max Movies because he scares the living shit out of me. Hold <laughs> on. Oh wow! Uh, Mad Max says, uh, "I think you should." Uh, I think you should apologize, right? I'm sitting here in a goddamn hey. torn down pool house. I don't even know pool house is torn apart, okay? It's torn apart because I'm remodeling on my $70 webcam, okay? I'm no better than you. Uh, movie Madness Entertainment, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to MMB Live. Yes, I'm alive. I just, you know, woke up thanks to Brian. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Remember to smash the like button. We got a show full of movie topics. We have members mailbag. Uh, I got to send a link to Eddie. Eddie's, Eddie's uh, although, hold on. Well, well, and we watched that sweet ass episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, we're going to talk about Obi-Wan spoilers. We're going to talk about Miss Marvel. Uh, all of that. And let me see here. See, okay, the thing I like about Miss Marvel, it's mm -hmm. a surprise for me. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, it, like I just kind of put it out of my head because I'm so busy during the week. So it's like, when I get home on Wednesdays, I'm like, oh wait a minute, it's just There's refreshing. Two shows to watch. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Uh, here we go, Eddie. How's it going, man? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I hope you guys are okay. Oh, yeah, we're doing great. Right. We got lots of topics. We are going to talk about Ironheart, too, uh, which is the main topic. I have, uh, oh, let me, I'm trying to do better thumbnails. I'm going to try, I don't know, is this a good thumbnail? Um, they're going, they're, the reason I'm bringing it up today is there's news about it. They're starting filming uh, the Disney Plus series. And this image on the right is from Wakanda Forever. That's how she's going to look in the movie. That's her first image. I mean, this came out a while ago, but that's from Wakanda Forever. Um, I'm interested in the character. I love Tony Stark. I love Iron Man. Uh, what? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Vince is screwed. And uh, Ruby, listen, if we can avoid the Ezra talk, we're going to avoid it. I don't, I honestly, it may, that could be a good sign if Ezra, all I'm going to say is that if Ezra, deleted their social media that might be a good thing i will be there eventually maybe what are you, what are you teasing us maybe the, what is this rj trying to do here eddie does eddie does rj oh, no, no, like, no, no, oh, no. bring on rj this, bring this on is RJ. pro wrestling this is pro wrestling think about it he's like guys uh, okay i'm teasing uh, my return all right well you please know, please help. wait an hour please help mme spread the good news uh your like really helps the show why do I ask for likes above subscribers and all this other stuff? Because likes have the most impact on the show. I've actually found out and we got hundreds of people that watch the replay. If we get like 69 likes, I don't know why that number pops in my head all the time. Isaac really got did, you know, did me in, but if we get 69 likes, that really makes the show uh, get some traction and it's all up to you. It's all up to you. So let's get to the members mailbag first. The, the VIP section of MME, the members always come first. Wait. Did I? Uh, I don't remember if I put anything in there. The members come going. first. Eddie, did you leave a members mailbag question? No, I never do. Okay. <laughs> I'm spending time with my grandma? Ew. No, I'm just kidding. It's probably Say further than this. I imagine uh, she just got here because she flew in the visit and I'm sleeping downstairs. So I can't escape to my room to stream until public specific times and moments. OK, we'll get grandma on here. This is MME. This That's is a saying. family. Affair. It's like pro wrestling. He's trying to get the crowd. <laughs> hype. He'll make like an appearance and be like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, tell, tell grandma we're talking <laughs> about <laughs> Ironheart. <laughs> It'll be like Sting coming back from WrestleMania. Uh, just the, did I talk to you? 
Brian, did I talk to you about? I am so excited. You know, but people were salty about this. Like, oh, you know, these other. Uh, oh, are you? Uh oh, uh oh. All right, another good. Harley Quinn. Uh, we only got one on screen. Uh, oh, give me man. all the, give me all the Harley you got. That's what I'm saying. That's rather misogynistic, Max. Well, um, whoa! I didn't mean, I didn't mean to be like that. I'm kind of, I'm kind of on the level of like overexposure at this point. Like, I think the character Joker, the fact that there's like, we've had like four different iterations in the last. 10 years yeah but i'm like i just i'm i'm all for it there's so many stories to tell we're getting it's not like we're not getting new characters we are getting new <sighs> characters we got black adam blue beetle uh we got sasha Kali, supergirl uh, yeah. Yeah. we're getting we're getting other things we're getting the flash. i would rather watch the next captain america movie okay um i'd rather watch <laughs> I I, I'm going to go watch Thor know. Love and Thunder because that movie looks cool. Um, yeah, I have to get my tickets still. I, all the movies I've watched in the last year have been Marvel movies. I watched Shang-Chi, Spider-Man, uh, and Doctor Strange, and then I'm going to go watch Thor. So, like, eh. I haven't watched a single DC movie in theaters this year. Yeah. Yeah. Ba Batman sucked. Um, uh, I like Batman, but I rewatched The Joker today part of it i watched the, the like the intense part where he starts you know killing people and i was like wow the, the one is... damn person oh, oh sorry like the like the three people he kills in that whole movie <sighs> man oh uh, he kill he kills robert De Niro. i think he kills at least four the dude with a pencil yeah and those um three um Wayne Enterprise oh, yeah. employees. Okay. Train station. okay, sorry, sorry. So five. Yeah, that's like a streak. That's I think a, I think Christian Bale killing spree. Batman has a better body count. Oh well, <laughs> not not as of a not as of aggressive. Sorry, I'll, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. No, I'll no, no, up. no. But I I rewatched it and um I actually was thinking about doing hey. Smash the like button if you want to see me do this topic because it's 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 about I don't know if I should do this or not because there was an I you know I like Bill Maher. You know I like real time with Bill Maher. And I don't want to I want it's going to be a nuanced conversation. It might it might go it might go into chaos though if it's a, so I'm not going to throw it here. But he was talking about violence we, we in know, me, RJ. violence in movies. <laughs> violence in movies and how there's a track record of people that do, uh, maybe it's too sad. I don't know. A tracker of people that do it being, this is one of their go-to things. They like to watch a lot of violent content. And I don't want to put a blame or say you sh or censor people or say you shouldn't have this content, but you know, if there's also weird things like in the States, something that, you know, like why, why is it so prevalent in the States? Something else that's very interesting to think about is in other parts of the world, um, you know, nudity and sex isn't as faux pas as it is here, but violence is widely accepted in media here. So there's also something very, you know, there's a conversation to be had there that I might get to one day because you know, you do agree with that, Brian and, and Eddie, in the United States, that you can have as much violence as you want, but if you have some, you know, and it's not like I'm saying bring on the nudity or bring on the sex. I'm just saying there's a conversation to be there, what we consume. And it's not, I don't want to put a blame all in one direction about laws, about guns and stuff, because that could be a headache and that could get political. But it's a combination of everything, really. Yeah. It's a combo. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Bill Maher, I, I, I'm, I'm going to save that for another topic. I'm just saying, would before I get to it, would is it even worth, you know, going down that route? Because that could get, that could become a headache. That topic. What do you think, Brian and Eddie? Uh, because Bill Maher did it on last week's episode. He's like, it's time we really talk about and not be scared to talk about. Um, not that it, he wasn't like blaming them, blaming movies, but he's like, if you really think he 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 addressed it though, that there's a, a lot of. You know, there's a large connection between that. There's also he he didn't just put the blame on one thing. He said mental illness, 
He also mm-hmm. met. He also th- he had a pie chart. Are we are we adults enough that we can have that conversation to say, you know what? Let's not blame everything, but there is something to be said about all these categories, and the you know the people that 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 uh, do certain things, what they like to watch, what they're into. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's too. Let's get back to movie talk. Never mind. I, I feel like it landing like a a, a a a a big thud. Okay, go ahead, Eddie. I I don't know. When it comes to that conversation, I'm pretty sure. If, if that conversation does happen, then probably the video game talk will have to happen as well, saying that do video games do that as well as just like movies, even though I, I don't know. it. it de- like I said, I don't know. I, oh, I need to see the stats when it comes to that. Sometimes I, I, people just are just, sometimes water. people are just, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's, well that's I mean, thing, I, I would sometimes preface. people are just crazy, you know. Sometimes it, that just happens, like. I don't know the best the best way to describe it. I'm not sure, but well, one thing for sure before before getting out, like things we can. How would I preface it? Is things we can agree on, regardless of your politics. I think one thing people can agree on is that uh, mental health has to be treated more seriously, less dismissive by in a society. You know, that's what I would say, and um, I don't know. That's where I would start. I would start there. That's I, th- I think no matter what side of the aisle you're on, that that should be considered. I'll I'll, I'll revisit that. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's uh <laughs> let's go to the members mailbag. We got 28 viewers. Remember to smash the like button. Like help MME spread like a oh, that's a bad joke. Like a pandemic. No, that's gross. What did that what the hell? I'm really off today. I'm really off today. All right. Here we get to the members' mailbag, and we have some interesting topics. The VIP section of MME. And then we are going to talk spoilers for Obi-Wan and Miss Marvel because it's fun. I can't wait. I can't wait to do other streams where people catch up. I'm sorry. I would like everyone to be involved, but it's just I'm enjoying sitting at home, watching these shows with me and my wife. Um, All right. So here is also the members' mailbag. Senor Nerd. Let me let me blow this up here for this question. Would you rather Joaquin Phoenix is Doctor Strange, but no Joker, or Ben Affleck writing, directing, and starring in the Batman, but no Robert Pattinson? Uh, that's what? <laughs> Senior nerd. Uh, I like Doctor Strange with Ben. Ad- Big Cumberbatch, and I love Joker, and I can't say no Joker. Um, and I would love Ben Affleck writing, directing, and starring in the Batman. And and I could, even though I really liked Robert Pattinson, I don't think it was is like the m- most amazing performance where I could deal without it. I would put Joaquin Phoenix Joker performance over robert pattinson's batman performance so i would go with ben affleck writing directing and starring in the batman with no robert pattinson uh you go ahead brian what would you pick uh i don't know i mean here's the thing okay i talked about this the other day like ben affleck kind of always played a douche in my opinion like before <laughs> I saw, before i saw him as the batman so like seeing him as batman really warmed me up to him as you know an actor so if i'm gonna see anything involving ben affleck and batman he better be putting the goddamn suit on uh so i i wouldn't i i, I don't know dude I, I didn't i didn't really like oh man you're taking this question very seriously Brian. Yeah, it's just simple, i mean it's this a simple, is a really this is a, it's a simple it's a simple nerve i, I would honestly i would take the first one i would take the first one the first oh one, first walking first one. phoenix as dr strange with no joker okay yes um i dude i i like the joker for what it was but if we're gonna sit there and try to connect that movie to any kind of greater dc universe you lost me at the word go it's a nice standalone film okay it's a nice psychological thriller but not, I wouldn't call it a DC movie other than the Joker. Other than, you know what I mean? Like Bruce Wayne or, uh, you know, 
that little stuff, other than that, I wouldn't consider it a DC movie. And we've been on panels before where we're like, nah, that movie wasn't really a DC movie. So I mean, that's well, we'll give you a warning, Ruby, when we're when we get to that part. We're not gonna cover that for a little bit. Okay, Eddie, what would you rather have? Mm -hmm. Um it's hard because I love Batman and I love um, Affleck and Pattinson as as the Batman. Um, Walking Joker film was great. I thought it was a phenomenal um, act, act, acting in in that film. Um, but you no, know, no Benedict as as Doctor Strange. Just it's a hard choice. It really is. But I think because of my Batman bias, I'm not to say you know it is what it is. Walking, go ahead and be Doctor Strange. I guess. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, I'm the only one that went for uh, Ben Affleck and no Robert Pattinson. Okay. Uh, All right, um, thank you, Senior Nerd, for the question. And then we got our pal Anthony Beltry, VIP of MME members, uh, with his question. Should Sony still make the Men in Black and 21 Jump Street crossover? Uh, I would say if you could get Will Smith back, Channing Tating and Will Smith and uh who's the other guy with Men in Black? What's his name? The old guy. Uh the fugitive. What's his name? Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, that would be I think that could work, you know. It would be really fun. Yeah, it's gonna be I would I would be up for it for sure. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen at this point. I don't think Tommy Lee Jones is gonna come back with Will Smith. Um, I think Will Smith should some revisit some projects and take a severe pay cut just to get rolling again, honestly. Uh, just to get the throat, you know, rip off the band aid and get back to working. I think once you have one or two movies that pe that the audience accepts, I think people are going to put this in the back burner for Will. So I think he should go back to his stable of, of care. I don't think he's not going to get those Oscar bait movies with this, you know, with this stuff behind him. He needs to just do some fun popcorn flicks and get back on track. Bad Boys, Men in Black, you know, something like that. So I would say hell yeah. And I like the idea. It's not the strangest crossover. That's like G.I. Joe and Transformers. Uh, I think it could work. I think it was a good idea. You know, what do you think, Brian? Uh, let's see here. Men in Black at 21 Jump Street crossover. Uh Sure, but I, I don't know. I would. I think I would rather just have it like. Well, I don't know. Maybe just another Men in Black movie, mm -hmm. but you know, get the gang back together again. But I don't know if we're gonna get Will Smith back as, you know, an agent. Yeah. I would like it. I I didn't hate Men in Black International. I, I didn't either, yeah. but I just don't like Chris Hemsworth. Like yeah, that you know what I mean. Like I don't know. I actually like. Men in Black 3 and Men in Black International more than the first two. <laughs> you might think it's a bad take, everyone. But, uh, Eddie, what do you think? Uh, Men in I Black. don't remember about a potential crossover, but I like both of those franchises. I like International too, to be honest. It is what it is. Um, I I would be down for it, to be honest. I don't think they are going to make it, though, but I would be... I don't know what the hell the, the, the script would be or the plot of the film, but like, you know, I support both of those franchises. So, you know, if it ever did happen, I'll support it. Mm, yeah. Uh, okay. We got Potion Sword Run, who has 555 subscribers. Someone's got to sub to him right now. The, we can't have this stand. That's too, that's too nice of a number. 555. Go sub to Potion Sword Run. And damn you, we're trying to, uh, okay, w without getting into the chaos. Would you rather be Ezra or Amber this month? Well, at least I think uh, I think the shit's already hit the fan for Amber, so she's okay. Uh, uh, I'd rather be Amber. Actually, I'd rather be Ezra because Ezra is the Flash. Amber is just Mara. She's never been a like a main <sighs> character. Um, no, they're talking about the the actual people, not the characters. No, I know, I know. Um, well, we. Well, Amber's already been already Amber's already been drugged through a court battle. Yeah, she's she's already been through her her river of shit. So I'd probably be yeah. Uh, and there's the week. story about the uh, talking about shit. There's the story about the bedroom, 
in yeah. the blankets, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, but at least she's not on the run. Yeah. Uh that's a shit question, potion sword run. Uh I think well, I he think did it Ezra. three days ago. That's kind of like freaking like prophetic. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'd I think I'd do Ezra and then I'd say, I want to be the Flash, everyone. I want to be better. I want to I want to just have fun and be in a movie star again. And that's what I would do. And I would work with all the authorities. I'd clear everything up. <sighs> Max, you know, some things you can't walk back from. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to pick Ezra. And I and then I would say, I'd say, I'd do interviews like on Oprah. I'm like, man, I really thought that I was Evil Barry for a while. Then Fuck. I went to... Then I, then, <laughs> Then I then I went to some rehab. Oh, I was really I messing it mind. up there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you take the wrong trip, you know that kind of trip, and you think you're your movie character, or or be like method acting, huh? Maybe we should stop that shit. He puts the and then I then acting. I would blame then I would blame Jared Leto. I'd be like, man, you know, I got some advice from Jared. I'm never doing method acting again. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would say. I would go to the press and be like, wow, I got confused. I thought I was in character. You know, go ahead, Eddie. Oh, my. Yeah. I I don't know. It, it's hard, to be honest. I, I'm kind of going in line with Amber Heard because it's like, well, I'm, I'm being made fun of still, but he's, oh, that shit's over. But yeah. as like, I, I don't know, maybe, I mean, the, the stuff with as I, I don't know. It's, it's very hard. Like I said, I, I think I can make up a good excuse as well about him. But at the same time, I don't want to go through the process of doing that. So I might as well just pick Amber because all she's doing is just chilling while people are making fun of her. Yeah, she's broke as a joke, though. And she just had a baby. You know, that's a life-changing event. And regardless, regardless of how, how much your life sucks, your baby doesn't hate you yet until they get older. You know. <laughs> uh, all right. Good question. Potion Sword Run, but screw you for asking it because we don't want to talk. We don't talk about Ezra. No, no. Well, we do. Okay. Anthony Beltry. What movie did Tom Hanks score his first Academy Award nomination? Was it Forrest Gump? I know Apollo 13. Or or did uh, Philadelphia come out before Forrest Gump? Uh, I don't know. I have no clue. I mean, you're really going to make us Google this crap? Like, come on, Anthony. Fucking asshole. Well, what's... What right, you, we you don't have to be right. It's just, what do you think? What do you think? That, I'm thinking oh, I'm either Philadelphia... Right. I'm thinking Philadelphia or Forrest Scump. Maybe it was Philadelphia. Our journalistic integrity here, folks. What journalistic integrity? I'm just here for first. Fun. Is this like... Nomination. Supporting? Academy. Okay, I'm sure it was for a supporting actor, right? Look, Eddie doesn't even say shit. He's just googling already. I uh, just like I'm being. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not even bothering looking at it. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> See the full it... list on Imd. Uh he his first nominee. Oh, nice. Wait, that's best actor in a leading role. Okay, Academy Awards, 1989's big, big. Yeah. Big from 1988. I never thought he would got a nomination. For Best Big. actor in a leading role. Okay. And then in 1994 was Philadelphia. Well, that was Forrest his first Gump win. In 95. What was his uh, first? He won one? it. He won it also again for uh, Forrest Gump. He was a nominee in 99 for Saving Private Ryan. That was a great movie. Uh, nominee in Castaway and a nominee in a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Oh, that mm -hmm. one where he played uh, what's his face. Um, Mr. Rogers? Mr. Rogers, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. All right, nice question. Uh, here we get to RJ. Marvel Mania, would you rather fight 100 Angie, Angie, Angie. Angry, Angie. angry Chihuahua-sized lions or 10 lion-sized chihuahuas? Ooh. Definitely the 10 lion-sized chihuahuas. Wait a second. No. Uh, Holy shit. That's a tough. Uh, that's another tough one. Come on, dude. Chihuahua-sized lions. <sighs> oh, definitely the small, the small lions. The small uh, yeah, because I lions. could kick. I can kick chihuahuas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Whoa! Jay. I wouldn't kick your chihuahua. 
Oh wow! I mean, to be fair, those are actual lions, though. Like just midget lions, so you know it's yeah. Really so think about it. Like you could just like run across them, like James Bond and live and let die oh, across the alligators. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, I don't like these scenarios uh, that you're giving me nightmares. Would they reproduce like tribbles? Because then I'd be fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I but it, the 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 a giant chihuahua is like a scary thing. Dude. Especially if they're yippy, chihuahuas. like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, lots God. of lots of chihuahuas are a scary thing. Like they're like both scary. Little, like if a like, little teeny dog is roaring at you, it's cute, you know. But yeah, if you get a, lions. but but can you imagine if a, you know like those yippy chihuahuas? Not all chihuahuas are annoying, but some of them can be. You know, RJ's chihuahua was very nice. I've seen her on screen. Well, but the, of, like the really of... annoying ones, a giant one. Holy shit! No. Oh. It'd be like a freaking like Clifford the Big Red Dog yeah. status. You know, could you talk to it and hang out? Oh, Zeno, no. come on. <laughs> Chihuahua size. I don't know. What, what do you say? What did you say, Eddie? Well, I'm finding the, the, the small lions. Small lions? Okay. And then oh, Will Wallace goes off that. That's saying, would you rather fight 100 cats or 10 Great Danes? Definitely the Great Danes. Cats yeah. could be vicious. Cats are messed up. Great Danes are usually, I don't know. My one I little know. We can cat. work something out. My one little cat could take me out sometimes, but my, my dog I could get a hold of. So, um, Zeno just makes a statement. I stand with Ezra Miller. Good for you. I'm standing far away from Ezra. Uh, I don't want any of that bullshit. No, I'm just, not, my thumb, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm standing away from, uh, oh, God, the corn is here. Uh, hold on a second. No corn bots. All right. All right. Did you have to come here? Really? All right. I got hold it. On. I got it. Bro, done. All right. Hold on here. Don't mess with the wrench, bitch. Oh. We, whoa, we got 38 people watching, only 21 thumbs up. You are the, you are the, you are what makes MME happen, everyone. Your thumbs mm -hmm. up. Gives us fuel for nerd talk and movie talk. Let me refresh this just to see, because Eddie looked like he was busy, was just to see if Eddie contractors. squeezed in a, a comment there. Hold on. Or CGH, we're, you know. No, nothing. Good job, Eddie. Uh, oh, wait a second. Food. We missed one. I almost missed one with little movie perp. Okay. Um, name a director you'd want to direct a comic book movie who has it already be as specific as you want the property you'd want them to want them to direct my examples nicholas wanding refin i have no idea who that is lobo panos cosmato spawn mitzi perone uh poison ivy movie oh damn uh I would say Rick Famuyiwa, Um because I really like what he did on The Mandalorian. And everyone did said Deborah, Deborah Chow. And I still like Deborah Chow. But I think I my favorite episodes from episode one of Mandalorian were Rick Famuyiwa. Now, what comic book character would I want? Uh, I don't know. I would be up for him for anything. Maybe... Maybe uh, bring back the Punisher with uh, uh, what's his name? That's just a guess. And then who else would I would think? No, Martin. I don't want Martin Scorsese. He doesn't like comic book movies. James Cameron. James Cameron would do an amazing comic book movie uh, for an Avengers movie. You know, Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah. So that's my pick. I'll, I'll pick one male, one female. Uh, oh, wait. I didn't pick a female. I picked James Cameron. Uh, you picked Bryce Dallas Howard. I would pick Bryce Dallas Howard, too, for anything. Uh, I think those three would be good. James Cameron, Rick Femiua, and Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, Brian, do you have any picks? Uh, let's see here. Uh, confident. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> Oh, also, Dan Trachtenberg. He's doing that new Prey movie, the new Predator movie. I love Dan Trachtenberg. 
Sorry, I don't know enough. Like, I kind of just watched the movie as far as like comic book movies are concerned. Uh, so like different directors and stuff. Like, I mean, I don't know. I don't get necessarily blown away too much. So. Okay. Eddie, do you have any directors on hand that you would love to see do a comic book movie? Um, no, I can't think of any right now. Okay. Well, uh, Steven Spielberg. Actually, that would be a good pick. I would go totally go for Steven Spielberg for a Fantastic Four because he could do like a classic type movie. Uh, I would actually like, you know how they did for, for X-Men First Class where it was like a time period X-Men? I would actually prefer that for a Fantastic Four instead of being in modern day, you know, like the 60s or 70s or something. I would love that. Uh, Scott Derrickson already did, uh, you know, Doctor Strange, though, I believe. Alex Garland. Okay. All right, so thank you, VIP members, for the support of the show with Members Mailbag. Now let's get to the main topic. Who here is excited about Ironheart? Wow, really? Okay. Do you, do you know much about the character, uh, Brian, or Eddie? You know? Not specifically. A little bit. Okay. Um, what's your thoughts on them introducing a character that's in the vein of Iron Man after we know what happened at Endgame with Tony? It'd be nice to see something, but don't they? Didn't they kind of already give us like we can get Pepper Potts on the rescue armor kind of shit, right? We're gonna get War Machine. I mean, we don't yeah, know. yeah. It'll be cool to get somebody else donning some armor. I mean, if they make it right. Heck, I'll enjoy it. Like right, right now, everybody's like, you know, dude, Miss Marvel's sweet, dude. I love this show. It's great. Like, I never thought I'd actually enjoy it as much as I am. So, yeah. Well, let's bring up, let's bring up this article first. The reason <clears throat> I'm, the reason we're talking about it is they started filming, I believe, and then we'll get. I have a quick minute, a uh, quick little three minute video about Ironheart to, from Marvel that they produced, just to get a little backstory. She is getting a strong introduction because she's going to be in Wakanda forever and then go straight into a Disney Plus series. And I like that. Not a lot of these, um, not a lot of these Marvel shows got an introduction in a movie first, you know. Uh, bring on Ironheart. Hey, guys. Thank you, Rhea. Yes, hit that like button. Fire Lord Azul is not excited at all. Well, I think I think once you see her in wakanda forever uh which she's supposed to appear first you'll get excited oh shut up kelly <laughs> not don't you start please all right uh here we go come here kelly come here i'm sorry i'm sorry shut up no i'm just kidding <laughs> be nice be nice pup okay so here is the article first iron man disney plus spinoff iron heart receives promising updates. This is from the direct. Listen, I found the new site that I'm liking. You know, it's as rumors. People don't cringe, but uh, who's to say what we cover in the future? But uh, Iron Man Disney Plus plus spinoff Ironheart receives promising updates. Ironheart is one of Disney's upcoming Disney Plus shows in the MCU set to revolve around the story of Riri Williams. The, the name that makes anti-SJWs across the internet cringe. Oh, that Riri Williams. No one buys her comic books. No one cares. I don't, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. that's hyperbolic. We'll wait and see. Uh, I'm interested to see. L listen, it's not, it's not social justice to have a, uh, it, all these, all these comic book here characters have a stable of characters that are similar to them. They all have, there's Batgirl, there's Batman, there's Robin, you know, there's Nightwing. Uh, all these characters have characters that take up the mantle that are inspired by the mains. There's very few that don't. One Wonder Woman has it. Green Lantern has. There's a whole Lantern Corps. There's you know all these characters do. So it's not social justice. It's just it's just these stories that have been told in the comic book industry for years. And I'm interested to see how they introduce her character. Yeah, Riri. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to go over. I also saw one of my friends. Uh, make a video on a uh, Riva saying Riva. I'm like, oh god, you know. 
All right. So let's let's read a little bit more of this here. Uh, the lead hero will be portrayed by Dominic Thorne in her solo series, a stellar cast that includes Anthony Ramos, Lyric Ross, and Harper Anthony. Plot details of Ironheart are still being kept under wraps, but Marvel Studios has already confirmed that Riri Williams will first make her appearance MCU debut during Black Panther Wakanda Forever. The series is also rumored to tie into Armor Wars. So this is a this is why it's very interesting to go over now because you are getting a not they are going full. Yes, I will I will do that in a separate video, Isaac. I will I will do that. Um they are doing a lot of re re Williams storylines. And she's first getting introduced to one of the most epic Marvel movies out there, Wakanda Forever. So Wakanda Forever, and then right after you're going to see her own series with Ironheart, and then also Iron Wars. That's very significant. So this is one that there's other characters introduced, but she seems like she's a very significant character in the future of the Avengers with this. Thinking about that, Brian, and we're getting this bam, bam, bam. It's not like you got to wait a while for them. They are filming Ironheart now. They just started filming. So by the time Wakanda Forever comes out, you're getting that. And then right after, right after the Ironheart series, you're going to see her again in Iron Armor Wars. What do you think of that? Well, that's pretty cool. I always like it when they kind of build up. Yeah. It's always yeah, nice yeah. with the Marvel buildup on that one. It's always fun. Yes, I have been exposed on Isaac's channel. Uh, we will get to we'll, we'll do this topic first, then we'll get to the Kenobi talk. Eddie, what do you think about how much Riri we're getting on the, these these three projects? She's being introduced in Wakanda Forever, and then right away you're getting two series on Disney Plus with her in it. Um, sounds like they're pushing an agenda. And oh, no, nah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's I don't really like I said, I I I don't really care that much for the character, but I mean if they if they give us a strong push for her, then I'll I'll learn to um like her, I guess. I have nothing against the character though, it's just that I don't know, I'm not really that much experienced to begin with the character, but well, I'll see how how she is when she's first introduced. Then I'll be like, Okay, do I want to, you know, keep on continuing with the we're watching her progress in the MCU or not, but like I said, I'm I'm giving her a fair shot. I, I know some uh, some I know some people definitely won't, but I will. Well, keep in mind when you go into a new medium, I think we should give it a chance for adaptation too. Like some maybe Riri Williams isn't the most popular comic book character, but maybe the live action one will be. You know, people seem to forget Iron Man was always a cool character, but Iron Man wasn't a superstar until when Robert Downey. You know. Iron Man was not a huge mainstream superhero until Robert Downey. So going to, to live action can make all the difference that we just don't know. Now, do I think this actress has enough to compete on that level as uh, Robert Downey? I don't think so initially, but I'm, I'm willing to be surprised. Who knows? Who knows? But I, I just I think she's going to be a cool character. But it's hard to get to that level with Robert Downey. Yeah, I wonder how, um, if he's going to show up in the show. Mm. Maybe they'll have uh, I, they if they do it probably be a flashback. Well, to it's when a, they, you she's know, supposed to have it in an AI version of him though in the like, yeah like, yeah from the comics. So I'm just saying at least like a, his voice or something. Hey, Maybe, Jay, I, I don't know. Nice to see you again. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Fire War. We have we'll see. They haven't been really doing good, that good of a job as far as this phase, in my opinion. Okay, welcome to your opinion. Um, I would like to say I'm happy for everyone's opinions, but not everything has to be perfect. You know, when you have a big, big universe, including Star Wars, things could be above average. They don't have to be, you know, amazing. And I, and I can accept that, you know, uh, when we're getting so much content, I think overall the, the level of quality is pretty high for me, honestly. Um, okay, so the series is also rumored to tie into Armor Wars, a project centered around Toby Stark's best friend, Colonel James Rhodes. Amid all the casting updates and confirmation of Black Panther, Black Panther 2 director Ryan Coogler's involvement behind the scenes. Ooh, I didn't know Ryan Coogler was going to be 
involved behind the scenes with this project, a new batch of significant updates about the Disney Plus series has emerged. Ironheart adds another notable cast member. Deadline shared that Good Girls alum Manny Montana, I have no idea who this is, has joined the cast of Marvel Studios Ironheart. While details around his character are still shrouded in secrecy, the outlet noted that Montana is a series regular opposite Re 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 Williams actress Dominique Thorne. Deadline also revealed that Ironheart is now filming. That's the part I'm excited about. That's when I want to get hype is when a project starts filming. And these Disney Plus series have gonna have had a fast turnaround, you know. Um, let me see here. Alongside Thorne, Montana joins a stellar cast that already includes Anthony Ramos and Lyric Ross. So I think that's enough for this. We're not gonna read the whole story. Let's get to a quick video, just a three-minute video where it talks about Riri Williams, and I'm excited for the character. And then we'll talk about Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan spoilers. Uh, so let's bring that up here. This is produced by, I had another video ready for, by Blurred Entertainment, which I really like, but it's like, it's like uh, 16 minutes. So I'm just like, nah. All right, hold on here a second here. All right, get the video ready. Now, it is meant for children, so don't say this is so cheesy. It's just to get an idea who this character is. And I like researching characters when I know they're coming up. I don't know if I'm going to go back and read the comics or not. I don't know. You don't know Ironheart, a teenage MIT student who flew in to fill Iron Man's armored shoes? Well, hold on to your helmet. Let's go. Oh, are you laughing at me? Laughing at me watching kids' videos? Go ahead, Eddie. Go ahead, Brian. Go ahead. I wasn't laughing at you. No, I'm smiling. I'm not laughing at you. Okay. I, I, dude, I had a funny thought pop into my head. I don't know. What I'm I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I All like right. blocked out the last half hour. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Let's see. Riri Williams grew up in Chicago with loving and supportive parents, her mom and her stepdad. <laughs> who was the only father she'd ever known after her biological dad was seemingly killed in a robbery when she was just a baby. Riri didn't relate well to other kids, so her parents got professional help, and it turned out she was a bona fide genius. Riri just didn't have anyone to talk to. That is, until she met her bestie, Natalie, who loved her okay. smarts and encouraged her to be a kid again. Fast forward a few years, and 13-year-olds Riri and Natalie were enjoying a community picnic in the park when tragedy struck. Shots rang out. Riri's stepfather tried to save the girls from a drive-by shooting, but Ooh. Riri's stepdad and Natalie were both killed. Oh, no. Natalie, too? Ooh. Damn, bro. Superhero stores always have something like this. That's a hard-knock life, man. Wow. Can you imagine... Listen, this before we go further, I I have issues with my father. He's always been have mental issues, but he's still my father. But like getting to that point where you finally have a father figure, like uh, like she said, her stepfather when her father wasn't there, and then he gets saves saved in her life. He he goes, and then also your best friend at the same time. That's life changing. I I, I can totally understand how she, you know. If that's the impetus that started her superhero journey, I could totally get that. Totally get that. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, with the way violence is in the world right now, I think some people can relate to this scenario. It's not it's not that crazy to think it's plausible in the real world, unfortunately. We would love to say this stuff never happens, but it could. Uh, so that's that's quite an, uh, a horrific start to her journey, you know? Uh, okay. Devastated, Riri plunged back into her own world. What if, like Iron Man, she could create a mech suit to protect the people of Chicago? Her hard work paid off, and at just 15? And, you know, not to bring in the real life politics, but Chicago is one of the most violent cities in the States, I've heard, consistently, you know? So, that that's an interesting that's an interesting area too for her to grow up. I so far, what do you think, uh, Brian and Eddie? This backstory, 
you know, it, it's very, it can't be very accurate to reality, unfortunately. Um, what do you think about, about this start to, to her journey to become a superhero? Do you see why it's pulling her in that direction? Why she wants an iron heart, a heart too. I like the name, a heart to protect. So that, that really gets me emotionally right there. Yeah. Um, absolutely. I mean, it's just one of those things, like I'm going to have to watch, see what the backstory, how they handle it. Cause you know how Marvel does these things. It's like, sometimes they kind of go closely to the story sometimes they deviate so you know it might be something a little bit different is how we're introduced to the character you know what i mean but i do agree a lot of the tropes for superheroes nowadays are you know tragic events happening mm -hmm. which spurs you know something else i mean like iron man for example like <laughs> you know not not exactly you know so that happened to him as opposed to other people you know but every superhero has their art, you know? Yeah. And you know what else comes to my mind is I need to see this play out in live action to really feel for the character, even though it's not something I want to see. And I think that is probably going to be the most important part to the character is the introduction, the origin. Do they have time to do this in Wakanda forever? I don't know. But this would also be really... Can they handle this at the beginning of a Disney Plus series to handle this storyline in live action so you see this play out? I don't know. Also, um, she's supposed to be younger when this happens to her. To see a young girl deal with that, that's going to be very emotional. Can Disney Plus handle this? What if they skip past this part? I don't think they can skip past this part. I think they have to deliver on the whole origin. Um I don't know. What do you think? Can they skip past this, Eddie? This has to be part of her character. And, I mean, it can't just be talked about off screen. I mean, it has to be something you feel emotionally attached to to get the gravitas of the character in that her character's name is Iron Heart, that she wants to protect people. Don't you think you might need to see at least part of it? Um, no, I agree. When it comes, especially when it comes to like superhero origins, when some of them are tragic, I think it's gonna mean more to actually see it. I, I get it, it might be graphic or it might be kind of like, oh shit, here we go with this, like you know, sad scene, or her crying, wherever else as a child. But it's like we had to see that, we had to see the pain and you know, all that emotional damage. So when she becomes a superhero, she, she, she can overcome it and uh, obviously, obviously strive to make a difference in that area to try to help people. Because obviously back then, when she heard it as a kid, she probably feels guilty because she's a kid, so she couldn't do anything about it. And someone risked her life. Her old stepdad risked, her, he risked his life to save hers. But um, no, I think you do have to show it. Like I said, it's, you know, I you just have to wait and see it, the execution. If not, I mean, they, they could just reference it. I mean, I, I would be okay with it. But at the same time, I mean, they might as well just show it. Mm -hmm. Brian, do you think Disney Plus can handle this at the intro of a, a Disney Plus show? I you think don't they're know, gonna man probably give us a content warning like they did with uh Obi Wan yeah. or whatever. Yeah, because it can it can it can bring oh. talking about real life scenarios. That's the type of scenario that can you could, could touch a lot of people's hearts. They unfortunately have had to deal with. Um, but I think it's so important to the character though to understand. Um, okay, well let's see what else, and then we'll finish this and get to you know. She earned a full ride to MIT. Riri finally had access to the materials needed to reverse engineer her own Iron Man style armor. However, MIT security and the rest of the world didn't take too kindly to this unidentified flying student. On her maiden voyage, she stopped a runaway truck, but it also ran away with the integrity of her armor. Unable to return to MIT after her stunt, she landed home in Chicago. But mom wasn't having Riri's idea to drop out of MIT and take on the dangerous life of a superhero. Unsurprisingly, Tony Stark got word of this mech suited team. See, this is the other thing I'm like, how are they gonna do this? They have to do flashbacks. Unless they're gonna can they can they skip past the the Tony Stark being involved with the origin of the characters? With now that we know what happened in Endgame, they're gonna have to do a flashback, or should are they gonna just do something different? I mean, they could, like I said, they, in the comics, there's an AI version of him, but um, I think they could, they can have flashbacks. So, like, I'm pretty sure Stark was doing stuff with college students, like that internships, internship stuff with the with the, like, their science projects. 
So they, they could tie it back to her being part of that that um thing that um I probably it was called that he was doing in, in freaking um civil war with the kids. Well, but um, no, they could tie it back to that. Uh, she was part of that thing before she left, and she got to probably got to, to talk to him a couple of times. I, I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is the those are my those are my two biggest questions about the premier. You know, the origin of Riri Williams and Ironheart and the MCU is: Are they going to show how intense her origins were with her family? And how is the Tony Stark connection going to work? Because I think that's also important. I know that's that's the reason, Patrick. That's why we're like, well, how are they going to do this part? Uh, probably a flashback, unless they just don't address it. Or or uh, after Tony's gone, he has a grant for people in the science field at MIT, and that's how you know maybe maybe Pepper will reach out to Riri. Because of uh, that's another that's that's another way it potentially could happen. Honestly, I would prefer if if Tony reached out to her in the past. But if they're not going to do that, I can definitely see that there being some sort of fun to help uh, people get schooling in Tony Stark's name after Endgame and remembrance of him. And I could see either Happy. Or um, Pepper working with people to carry on Tony's legacy, so I could see that. I, I could I could see that happening too, and her working with like other genius scientists. Someone that that's uh, someone that would actually like to be in the show. To be honest, with her show is that I forgot that kid's name from Iron Man Three. I think that he would in a good spot to have in that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's finish this up here. And swung by the Williams's house to take her under the safety of his wing. A repulsor? So, when a second superhero civil war broke out, Riri came to his aid. But after a massive trauma, Stark was out of commission, and Riri had big boots to fill. Luckily, Tony is always thinking ahead. An AI copy of his consciousness was hand-delivered to Riri in his absence. Tony's AI... Okay. This is how I've long thought that uh, Robert Downey is coming back. He honestly, Robert Downey, let's be real. He didn't like doing the action scenes anymore. He just liked being the character. There could be a lot of scenarios where he's the next AI. And that could be a way. Whoever gets the grant. Here, there you go. Pepper Pot and Happy deliver the grant. To the to the person that gets schooling, and then they get Tony's AI. Almost like it's almost like in Star Wars, like a Force ghost, Obi Wan, or something teaching Luke. That's that could be really intriguing. What if they go that route, Eddie? If if Robert Downey is the AI and talks to, talks to obviously the AI is extremely advanced. It gets mm -hmm. a lot of the knowledge of Robert Downey's uh, Tony Stark, and more so. And it's sort of like a mentor to the next generation. And this is bestowed upon the person that gets the grant to MIT. Oh, my dear Lord, that would be amazing. I mean, you know, it, would, it would be cool to see. I mean, obviously, this is different from what would happen in live action. Because here, he just got, he's just unconscious and he'll wake up soon, whenever. But obviously, in MC, he's dead. So it's like, I don't, I don't know. Because some people think it would just cheapen in, it would just cheapen the, the his return being an AI in this show or something like that. If it if it if that's the outcome, but I mean I don't have no issue with Robert Downey Jr. just being a voice like Jarvis was, or um being physically there by asking the AI a small AI um, or whatever. I, I you know it is what it is. Well, Ready Set Geek podcast uh, said, "Hey, Ready Set Geek, hey, reach out to us if you want to come on the show. I haven't seen you before." Uh, the comic Stark was AI, but also Pepper Potts helped Riri as well with new tech for her suit uh but if she is in wakanda forever it will probably be a wakanda tech for her second suit okay that makes a lot of sense yeah also the angle with wakanda forever and uh you know oh definitely that, she, she'll be working with shuri you know yeah yeah definitely all right guided her armor upgrades while teaching her the superhero ropes and he helped her choose a superhero code name Ironheart. 
which was helpful because Riri was quickly thrown in the deep end, facing new supervillain foes. Eventually, Tony returned <laughs> in the flesh, and Riri could try heroing think that's on happening. her own terms. So she teamed up with the teen heroes, the champions, alongside. Now that 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 teen hero thing it looks pretty cool, but this just might become the Young Avengers. Uh, Marvel, Nova, totally awesome Hulk, aka Braun. I don't even Vision, know who that is. The unstoppable Wasp and Miles Morales, but she still made time to go solo. She even got a second chance in her own lab at MIT. She continued to grow as an inventor, creating her own AI named Natalie for memories of her bestie. Oh. Excuse me, I got something in my eye. Oh, God. Cheesy. Despite new villains, adventures, and a momentary grounding from the Underage Superhuman Welfare Act, Riri continues to fly high as a hero with a warm but iron heart. And now you do know Ironheart. The more you know, now you do know Ironheart, everyone. <laughs> cool. I like I like the character origin. I'd love to see that. There's lots of stuff. Uh, this is way too much discussion about a character that's confirmed already. I'm getting hype. I'm getting hype because I see the amount of projects and it's uh, it's coming soon. You know, uh, I look how much we like Miss Marvel. We're really digging the Miss Marvel show. So I'm getting, you know, I I understand people's it's somewhat more exciting for me to get a character I don't know that much about. No, I'm fine. It's just like here's my rule with like with my current level of enthusiasm with regards to like comic properties and stuff. I'm not going to try to get myself hyped up before it gets started. I'm going to go into it kind of blind, mm -hmm. and I, and I'm doing that with Miss Marvel, and I'm loving it. So it's like. If I could do that with Ironheart, you know, why the hell not? Like, sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another quick, just a quick <sighs> article about the actress. She got hired without even auditioning. That's kind of interesting. Uh, based on her, her work. Uh, it says, let me see. Thorne played. Okay. It says Ironheart actress Dominique Thorne got the role of Riri Williams without even auditioning for the part. Announced that Disney Investor Day 2020. It's been flying under the radar since. Uh, Thorne played Sheila Hunt in the Academy Award nominated James Baldwin adaptation If Beale Street Could Talk. Thorne also starred in Judas and the Black Messiah, the 2021 Oscar tender that stars MCU alum Daniel Kaluuya as Black Panther leader. Both of these Thorns roles in those films were relatively minor, but Disney must have seen something that piqued their interest. So they reached out to her. Oh, that, nice. That's cool. That's cool. I like people that win in an audition, but uh, that, that says something, right? That they just thought she was per – apparently they thought she was perfect based on her roles in those two projects. All right. Should we get into Obi-Wan spoilers? Uh, yeah. Why not? Okay. Why the heck not? If you haven't uh, watched this week's episode, get the oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see if I still have uh oh I have Miss Marvel spoilers. Hold on a second. I'm gonna change this. Obi. Give me a second. I'm just gonna do this for both. Because we usually talk about them both at the same time. All right, let's get to Obi-Wan first. Spoiler warning. You know, I can't wait to talk about I can't do two separate things. I, I'm not organized enough to say this is the You're not a multitasker. Oh. Hell no, I'm not. And I just want to get right into the spoilers. Well, yeah. Uh, I really like non-spoilers. What the hell? I really, really enjoyed this episode. Um I I think people were right about the leaks about Reva. The execution, I think, was there. There were some WTF moments like, oh, come on. But that's been happening. Does it ruin my enjoyment of it? No. Um, I think I think there was no winning the battle of making Vader seem a little bit less intimidating by the constant escapes from Vader. But it happened in A New Hope, too, though. It happened I in A New Hope. It happened in A New Hope it. as well. Oh, dude, they escape from Vader all the damn time. Okay. 
Empire Strikes Back, everyone's favorite movie. Yeah, what are they doing? Yeah, on yeah, yeah. But the more and more it happens, though, it becomes silly. It's like doo, doo, doo. it becomes like it a cartoon happens almost. all the time to yeah. Darth Vader, dude. Like, oh, come on, different. No, no, Darth Vader. He's always lost, man. Like every movie, A New Hope. You know, he flies off, gets knocked off course. You know, has to course correct. He's flying off into nowhere. Okay, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Same damn thing. Like he tried to tempt Luke and he had to watch him fall. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just like, I don't know, man. I I I, I think diminish it. I, I don't think they can diminish him that way. And I think the the cuts back to you know <laughs> oh, somewhat <yeah>. younger. <laughs> you could tell they're older clearly in this in, in these scenes, but like it's kind of like in between the two movies. I like that. Mm -hmm. You know, where he's still Padawan, you know, during the yeah. film. So. Uh, I, I still really enjoyed it. I liked the fight sequence with uh, Reva and Vader. And, and listen, I had fears because of everyone on the internet saying Reva's going to have a redemption arc. I just knew it was going to happen, even though I was avoiding spoilers. We could just see it coming also because she was a youngling. Uh, I think it was, I don't think it was like, you know how sometimes in these movies or, or projects for geek culture, they like, oh, I'm good now. I don't think it was as cheesy as that. I think it was subtle and well-earned, you know, or turned back. And uh, some people don't understand that you, if you really want Vader, you can't just go up and you can't just walk up to Vader. You have to get in the, you know, in the, uh. Well, think about it. That's that's as Sith as you get. Well, you have you have to you like, have to you can't just go after Vader and show up and fight no, him. You it's, have it's to be within about, you have to be within the organization to get close yeah, to Vader. You got to work your way up the ladder to get to Vader, man. Like, see, that's the whole, that's what I've always enjoyed about that because it's it, it's like any anything else with like the old Republic or anything like that. It's like some some people some people said that. Why did why did Vader let, just let her be, knowing what was in her mind? Do you not know the Sith? Even the Emperor knew about Anakin. It's, it's and, all about covering and, power. And, and like, Vader knew about Luke. They like the they like the opportunity to turn someone, twist them, use them. Um, there may have been potential. If they they try to use people, and then if it doesn't work out, they toss them away. So. Uh, well, That's I don't know okay. about that. He's just still salty. Kathleen Kennedy's making movies still. Me? I'm not salty. <laughs> no, she's not, actually. She's not making yeah, movies actually. except the Indiana Jones 5. Uh, no, I'm just I'm just saying the criticisms. I'm addressing the criticisms. Uh, the other criticism would be that he left her, Vader, kind of incompetent just to leave her like that. But this is this has been happening all in Star Wars. People, you know, they... they they thrust a lightsaber into you. It's not like Quentin Tarantino. When they take someone out, you're like, you're going to make sure the mother effer stays down. You know, they're not. They're like, oh, I got you. I'm leaving Dude, now. Unless I see, like, a head coming off, I don't. They're, no, nobody's even then, ever really gone. Even nobody's then, ever really gone, Max. Nobody's I know, but really is, it, is it getting cheesy, though? Is it getting cheesy? Like, you have a battle, and then they're like, okay, I'm by. You got it. It cauterizes the wound. I mean, yeah. what the hell? It, 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 but why 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 do you, like, why do you think why do you think Vader just left her after that? Yeah, because he wanted her to sit there and suffer. He knew she'd still be alive. Hmm. Okay, Star yeah. Wars theory didn't. All right. Uh Eddie, did you have any what did you think of that? Okay, so maybe let's go rating. I would say eight out of ten for this episode. Eight out of ten. I do see some things there that I'm like, okay, but there was a lot of great stuff in there, including Obi-Wan, Ewan McGregor. Uh, Princess Young Princess Leia is a star. Uh, I'm actually disappointed that they they uh, showed young young Luke. I'm like, I don't need young Luke after Princess Leia. I'm not opposed to it. I'm just like that Princess Leia actress is just so amazing. I just get that Carrie Fisher vibe. Um, no, it's we have one more episode next week, so I would say eight out of ten. There are still some things like uh, it's not perfect. Nothing is really perfect. But uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Okay, Brian, what's your score? Uh, I would say uh, nine out of ten. I dude, this whole show, this whole show has blown me away because 
I I never really wanted. I did. I didn't want to see this. I was like, hey, whatever. Why do I want to see them go at it? I mean, you can go back on on these streams where I'm just like, I don't want to see Darth Vader and Obi Wan fight again. But I'm like, no, this has been legit, and and I, and I liked the interplay between that lightsaber duel that they had. Like that that, that every time they flash back to that is what I loved. Because and then you see it happen again to where like Vader Anakin is constantly failing because he wants to win. Mm-hmm. And it's like not always about winning. It's about, you know, just surviving. So I think there's a different that that whole that whole lesson that Obi-Wan was trying to teach Anakin played out again. Mm-hmm. And dude, it was great, man. And I'm not gonna sit here and try to get all like poetic and oh, I love the writing and all that kind of stuff. Dude, fantastic episode, man. Young rest, Leia, rest, the, awesome. rest in peace, one of the best new characters, too. That actress from Game of Thrones. I was you knew, afraid you knew she was gonna bite it. Come on, yeah. man. I know, but I really liked her character. I really liked her character. I was hoping, you know, like I would actually, that's, I would even see a spinoff on that one. You know how everyone's getting a spinoff? I'm like, oh, she's really, really, uh, I never said I was disappointed there's not more Luke. Yeah, you got to see him like dreaming thoughts of trench runs in his head, dude. Mm -hmm. Eddie, what's your, what's your rating for this episode? Uh, For me, I, I'll give it a nine out of 10. I was surprised, like, once I saw Coruscant, and then once I saw Aiden, and he went together, I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, Padawan, Anakin, and obviously um, Obi-Wan with, like, the molded type hair, I was like, oh my gosh, this is Attack of the Clone vibes, but no, I, I liked it, and I, I got the lesson as well, when Vader or Anakin always want to win, so that applies still to the present, when he's still Vader, he's still, like, he still has that type of of mindset where you, there's a bigger picture and just winning or you know being smart or playing the, the long run or you know just surviving but um no those scenes i i love the scenes i will say this going looking back at it when i watched the second time i was like damn this is a de age time because you get to, yeah you can't tell they're old so i was like damn but no i still love the scenes no matter what and i think her name is tila the 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 one, who, the one that used to be with the Empire. But yeah, when she died, I was like, damn, she sacrificed herself. Yeah. I, I didn't want her Thanks to die. Spoilers, Eddie. What the hell? This is this is this is spoilers. I though, haven't man. seen Miss Marvel like, yet, man. What the hell? I'm talking about Obi-Wan, man. Who the hell? <laughs> like, oh, I'm like, sorry. I, who I forgot, are you joking, I, RJ? I'm you sorry, saw it I, all. No, I, I I swear I've not seen Miss Marvel yet, actually. I need to watch it. Uh it's just I, I completely forgot that character's name because they made me care so little about her, sadly. Um uh yeah what I, I like i liked her i like i like what she did to be honest it is what it is i know i, I was thinking a bad joke i also liked the the reva fight i'm not gonna lie that fight was good but yeah vader was definitely he had the upper hand he was just you know making her look like a her. fool like once he once well, he once he split the saber and it threw him at her i was like damn he's like yeah pick it up pick it up see what happens i was like damn i would have been scared <laughs> Well, the one thing I would, anymore. the one thing I would say is it was kind of a little lame that Reva was had this big plan to go Vader, and then when she attacked, when she goes after him, she just goes after his back. That's Again, it. would have been so nice if he had more time to actually explore these ideas versus it being crammed in at the last minute in the last two episodes. I get really sick of that pacing and that structure. It's getting kind of old, but you know. Mm-hmm. I, I think the way it's a show is formatted needs more episodes and not I don't think this is gonna it's I like I like Obi-Wan but the way the show was structured and how the episodes have been it needs like another season to really finish we're out only the at the we're almost at the last the episode arc. I know yeah we're already need, at the last episode so I know but he needs something else like another season at least if it's rumored to be true but but it's like remember when know. RJ told me Max that it, season two is not going to happen. It's announced as a limited series. I'm like, they're going to make a season two. They're yeah, hope so. Two. No guarantee. Listen, this is the model now for for Disney Plus. You announce limited series, and then you're like, oh, it's so successful that we're going to make a season two. When they usually have plans to do it, unless it really bombs, they're probably going to do a season two. Come on, it's a it's a it's a it's a template now. Oh, it's announced as a limited series. Oh. And then you get the the scoopers and everyone saying, "Are they going to do a season two? And they're like, "Oh, we're going to do a season two. And then you yeah. have then you have oh then you have you and McGregor saying, "I'm up for more." It's it's a marketing tactic. Come on, everyone, don't I mean, you see, open your eyes. You don't see it. You're being played. I'm I mean, I'm in for the I'm in for the fun. So I I'm in on the joke. I know 
you know that they're they usually have a plan to do another another season. Um, yeah, you don't. Well, I, I didn't mean to interrupt if Eddie wanted to finish his thoughts before I jump in. Um, no, to be fair about the limited series things, I mean, with Marvel, they're pretty much keeping pace with that. I mean, you know, some only it's only one season shows. Well, um, when it comes to, I mean, I, I wouldn't care if it was just one season, all we want, just that I think we need, we need more episodes, like at least 10 episodes would have fleshed it out more. But, um, no, I like this episode, like I said, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, when it comes to all we want, I do have issues with certain characters or. The certain writing or pa- or pacing issues, like some episodes are good, sometimes sometimes episodes are just made in my opinion, in my opinion. But um, so far I I, I definitely like this episode. And I can't wait for the potential series finale or finale. I like I said, I, we don't know if it's like a season two or not, but we just wait and see. But no, I I like the episode. All right, uh, RJ, what would you give us as a rating this last episode of Obi Wan? Um. Like a seven, a seven. God damn, like exposed seven. RJ going through yeah, like, se- like, like a seven. Yeah, um, there's some stuff in this I really loved. Uh, this is the best episode since the first episode. This is the level of quality it's been greatly missing from this show, but there are some issues I still have with it. I have to say, um, I was quite disappointed with some of the, the direction in this episode. I thought that there was way too much shaky cam. Which kind of shocked me because Deborah Chow usually does a really great job directing action sequences. Uh, her Mandalorian episode in particular was quite a standout, but the action in the show is not living up to where the expectations need, were at, nor is it living up to the standard of quality we expect from Star Wars. Um, I think there's some really baffling writing decisions too. Uh, this is spoilers, correct? Yeah, look at the banner. Okay. Just making sure. I think that there were some baffling writing decisions. I thought that Leia climbing into that electric duck for the whole episode was kind of lame. Um, sad to say, too, I think the whole explanation is to, like, the ending would have been perfect. That ending would have been perfect. And I'm going to say it. I'm sorry. It's not me trying to be a toxic or anything, but it, that ending would have been more powerful if Reva actually died. I see. Right? Yes. I agree. It would have been way more powerful if sure. she actually I agree. died. Her surviving and then Vader and the Grand Inquisitors leaving her there makes absolutely zero sense in the context of what we know thus far. Um, and it's it's just disappointing. Um, I will say also the the rushed explanation as to why Reva found out Luke was on Tatooine I thought was laughable, and it was pretty ridiculous. First off, that Bail Organa would sacrifice the integrity of the mission and, and the location when he knows he's not supposed to contact Obi-Wan. I thought that was kind of stupid. Then Obi-Wan giving that communicator, which locates the most powerful force sensitive child outside of princess Leia to a random guy that he just met. That is a sleazeball smuggler, right? Who's a, who's just trying to make a quick buck. You give all your stuff to that guy, him. Well, can be, I ask, can I ask you a question? There were rumors that something was changed to justify season two. Could this have been it? The Reva scene? If it is, then it's stupid because honestly, I, I, I he well, like letting he, her letting her live, and then also the I think I think it made Vader and the Grand Inquisitor look really dumb. To be because honest, because that's that's something that could have been um, done easily changed to justify season two. Have Reva come back? Mm. Yeah. I'm just saying the biggest issue with this show is the writing. The writing in this show is not up to snuff whatsoever. There, like every time there's something good in the show that I really like, it's ruined by really baffling and dumb writing decisions. That's really. I would. I would like to say though, uh, we feel free to your opinion. We don't censor here, and we love criticism. But I think a lot of people are enjoying it, though, RJ. Uh, I, you know. There's a no, lot that no, I'm just going. Okay, but, I mean, that doesn't negate how I feel, though. I no, mean, no, no. I'm not negating your feelings. I'm just saying there's a lot that really... I'm not saying I, and I'm not saying I hate this. I'm just saying it's this show is just okay, but it has so many flaws and issues that it's hard to ignore for me, and it's like... Okay. Dragging it's not past enjoyment. the point. It, okay. It, 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 like, we're at, the, we're at the finish line here. You're supposed to, like... I hope the last episode's strong. I mean, this one was pretty good. It's the best since the first episode. But this is just not up to snuff, with, and that's okay. It's okay to not like stuff too. You just don't. Yeah, control. you're right. You're right. You're right. It is. And okay. there's just a lot of aspects of this that I just find to be particularly weak, and just 
I and I want I want to enjoy the show more. I really do. It's just I feel like it's it's been a waste. I think it's been a waste of you McGregor's talent. I think it, the show is completely what? now. I think, now I, no, I, I honestly I, think the show has wasted Hayden Christensen. It's I, wasted him. It really uh, has. Like I'm I, not I, sure. I'm. I have no, no idea why no, you market. No. I have okay. no idea. Hold on. I have yeah. no idea why you spent all your marketing machine buying promoting this as the grand return of Hayden Christensen, and this is what you get thus far. The, the, this episode justified Hayden Christensen being back in the series with those flashbacks. It really didn't, though. It barely did. For, it barely for a lot of people, it did. I, I, I know. I, I I know. Brian and me were, were really enjoying that flashback to tackle the clones even though no, no. Older. Listen, the flashback and, and, was cool but i'm saying yeah. you you market this show as the grand return of hayden christian you market the shows an old one in hayden christian so well, what the hell are you gonna do with him though no. like yeah. i mean honestly like i'm saying like there should have been flashbacks a while ago before episode five at the very end there should have been a lot more like or visions of something you know like just the implementation of how they've done that, I don't think has been. They showed very him strong. putting on the armor. I mean, you, if you're going to have Vader, you can't be taking. I'm saying, if you, if you do the, if you, the, really if you, really more, if you take the helmet off all the time, it's not going to feel like Vader. I'm not just saying like, take the helmet yeah. off. I'm saying you, you utilize more, <laughs> you utilize more flashbacks and vision sequences. They're using the visions and flashbacks at the very end when this should have been constant throughout the show, not just at the very end. <laughs> yeah, subjective, subjective. I no, I can't. I'm just, pushing, I'm just pushing back on you, RJ. Don't get take it personal. Okay, no, I'm, I'm it's fine. I'm just saying. No, I guess I... <laughs> no, to, to me, I, I, I when I saw that sequence, like I, said, at the beginning, I love the show. I, the why start. do I look I like a little kid episode. at the lunch table? Why do I look like a little? What the hell's off of my camera? Yeah, you're like really short. It's weird. <laughs> uh, to me, that opening sequence with um, young Obi Wan <clears throat> and young Anakin, I was like, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna proof to the people that say that uh, Hayden Christensen was wasted is that's going to prove them wrong in this sequence. That's it really what I didn't, thought. though, because it just me, proved, it the, it, it proved yeah. the point. Like, why were they not doing this sooner? Right? You don't need like, to overdo it. It's going to get, you know, it could get You don't need crazy. to overdo it, but I mean, like, this should have been like an episode or two earlier, to be honest. Like, this should have been happening. We should have been, like, moving a little bit quicker than this, you know? I feel like there was so much fluff towards the middle of the show, in particular with episodes... Um, some of episode two and episode four in particular, where it's just like, mm. it's just wasted, squandered potential. You know, well, like, we're gonna get that on Ahsoka. It's... We're gonna get that on Ahsoka. Says who? Potential. You don't know. Potential. It's just of it's always it oh, it's always just wait and see, guys. They're gonna do it next time. They're gonna get it right next time. Well, what about now? <laughs> you know, like sure, you could promise me the golden goose later, but there, you there's get the fact there, that got dipped out, cheaped out a little bit here. Yeah, there, there has to be. Uh, mm. It's a, it's a balance between keeping, keeping Vader, Vader, and Anakin, Anakin. You have to maintain a balance. Again, and if you go better far, writing, it, better yeah. writing could have done that just fine. I'm just saying. I, I, I don't your, think Joe. And listen, we I'm know, happy. I'm know happy for, for you to address your concerns, RJ. But for me, it worked. That part worked. Well, I'm me. just saying, we know yeah. for a fact that this show had production issues. That they had to rewrite the almost all the scripts because John Favreau and Kathleen Kenny man said this is way too close to the Mandalorian, mm. and it still feels a little like Mandalorian with the Leia plot, sadly. But it's fine. I mean, it's it's a classic. Trope. Oh, with the but. But yeah. this show, I can just tell watching it, has suffered greatly from production woes because it does feel like the script got a hatchet job to it and they tried fixing it, basically. Trying to shoehorn stuff in to try and fix up the narrative and touch it up a little bit. And I don't think that, that like they interfered way too much with the show at the creative level, at the script phase. And I don't think Joby Harrell was a great choice for this show. To be honest, I, I enjoyed Army of the Dead, but the writing was really weak in that. And I think some of the same issues that have carried over from that film have crossed over here. The, you know what was funny? This was the best episode since the first one. Guess who else wrote this episode? Andrew Stanton. Andrew Stanton. They had they got a new writer to come in during this episode, and I thought okay. it was a major step up. Who's does anyone know who's writing the last one? No, we don't know. Okay. All right. Uh Sorry to hear that you're having this many issues with it. I'm. I, mean, I, I, I don't I, hate I the show. I'm saying that it has a lot of issues, and it's 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 gone from being a show I was hoping would be great to being a show now that I feel at this point, even if that last episode is 
great. It's going to be a show I look back on and say it was just okay. You know, okay. it's okay. I think to it's me, above average. To, to, to me, me, to me, this is basically on par with the Book of Boba Fett, and I was hoping for something better. Oh, I, I think it's better than Book of Boba Fett. I, I honestly, at this point, no. I think Book of Boba Fett was stronger with its last two episodes. <laughs> Which is uh, shocking listen, listen, to RJ, me. you're. I didn't think I was going to feel that way. Are but... you are you trying to get on the be- the worst the movie talk takes this week on Friday? I'm just being honest how I feel. Because like, there are, so, there are I was sitting next to my brother to watching this, and we were both looking at each Like this just feels underwhelming. Like we felt like episode four, the last episode was just really bad. Maybe like, you need to stop. Wa- may- maybe you need to stop watching him on uh, watch parties and watch on the big screen or something. I don't know. I didn't do a watch party. I actually watched it on the big screen. Yeah, I know. Thanks a lot, buddy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Enough of uh, RJ's soapbox. Woo! Um, I mean, I kind of agree with some of that stuff, though, to be honest, as well. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm just the rest of you, RJ. I understand. I understand. I, 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 know, I get where I you are. I, I... Some, sometimes, here's what happens. When you're, when you're enjoying Star Wars, there's always someone that's really not enjoying Star Wars. And we have to be uh accepted i'm really excited for ahsoka well. though i think andor i think andor is going to be legit andor i think it's going to be amazing because you have a really talented writer and creative tony gilroy i think he he he's up to snuff i think he knows what he's doing that has a very specific vision 12 hour long episodes spanned across two seasons they know the story they want to they tell they're planning it out i think andor is going to be legit cannot wait for andor uh in august i think that show is going to rock i i don't know <laughs> i think there were some Maybe. amazing Amazing stuff in this series, and I think it makes Princess Leia's character better. I I do not. I'm just wondering what I, the point was. I totally dis. I totally disagree with uh, the Ewan McGregor's wasted. I think he's the best. One of the best parts of the show. His acting is on point. Can I be honest for a second? No, just really quick. Uh, we're moving on. We're not just really no quick. honesty here. Okay, go just ahead. Really quick. This show does not feel like he is the real lead. God damn it! Are you listening? Are you, what? Are you watching? No, no. I'm being honest on... here. No, to be honest, it, it's kind of like how much screen time does he have? What do you mean he's not I'm, real lead? I'm saying like he's he's not the one taking action or initiative a lot of the time either. Like it's only just now that it's starting to feel that way a little bit. But it's just I'm just saying it feels imbalanced. Is he watching there's, there's some no Phantom Menace here. videos? What the I'm hell's not, going on? I'm here? being I, honest is this about how I day? feel. Is this off? I'm being day? honest about how I feel, and I was not expecting to feel this way, but I do. Are you on the uh, this is the Leia show and this is the Reva show? Are you on that? I don't think it's that, but I don't think that this show has given Obi-Wan a great character arc thus far, to be honest. I don't think he has the agency that he should. Oh my god. There it deals with PS, PTSD. And I was get, it, and I was giving this show time, but we're at the very end, and it didn't really dissuade those feelings at all in me. Okay. Well, Zeno, we got to be, we got to be, you can't call people bullshit on their opinions unless you really don't know. He honestly feels that. I don't think RJ would just say something to say it, to create content. No, no, I, I, I'm being honest here. And yes, I listened to what Robert Meyer Burnett said. And I actually, for once, I do agree with him. I think he made a lot of strong points about how he felt about this episode and the last one. I think he was. Well, we know one. Robert Meyer Burnett is is watching too much of the bullshit on YouTube. Not you, though. Well, even if you don't listen to. Even, I thought Chris Carr also made some really great points as well. So. Yeah. All right, Isaac, we didn't hear from you yet, buddy. What's your thoughts on this episode of Obi Wan? Um, well, it's, it's my favorite one since the first one. Uh, I won't even. Like, I like the show. But I'm not loving it. Right? Okay. I like it. I don't, I don't really care. Uh, I'll I'll admit I do agree with RG on the Hayden Christensen thing. You know they were marketing him, but at the same time I was like I, I really wasn't expecting any of him. So I'm not like I'm not like too shocked. I'm gonna but, I'm gonna pull out something here. Uh, I, me me and Brian are on Team Obi Wan, and get the butt bomb, Master of Dunn's butt bomb for all your expectations yeah. to go suck it again. People's expectations. Brian is in our heads right. and aspirin. I like I said, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downing here. If, if, like I, I, I'm happy that people are enjoying. This Leave, show. Debbie not, Leave Debbie I'm just alone. Leave Debbie alone. She always got to be a downer. Uh, no, but but Brian's right about expectations. Uh, you know, let it, let us. Is it expectations though, or what they said the show was going to be though? Well, That's what did you difference. think was going to? What did you we think? Probably, was I didn't have any with Obi. The, the show was told gonna this was going to like they told us what the show was going to be. They said this is Obi Wan and Vader. 
Lucas Obi Wan was Lucas always going to be a tortured Lucas character. Lucasfilm with their marketing after, and how they presented the show after at you conventions feel, and in the press. After after you fail, and there's so been hard. nothing but Obi Wan and Vader in this show, <laughs> dude. Yeah, <laughs> it's all right, man. Agree to disagree, I guess. Yeah, this is you know, we're growing as a community. Agree to disagree. I mean, uh, but I but what did your okay? Let's get Isaac's thoughts on <laughs> RJ's major concerns about um, that. You and McGregor and Hayden Christensen are, are potentially wasted. Do, do you feel that way, Isaac? Uh, no, because I didn't expect anything else. You know, Obi Wan dealing with PTSD, Hayden Christensen appearing a couple of times. I didn't expect Hayden to really show up that much. You know, it's it's Darth Vader, uh, one of my favorite villain of all time. You know, I think he's much cooler with the mask and the James Earl Jones voice. But regardless. Episode four is the only episode in this series that I did not like. Uh, I'm liking the show, but I'm not sad to see it end. I'm kind of like in the middle. I'm just more like, eh, I like it, but I'm not like this isn't a show I'm going to rewatch, which is the same thing I said about Book of Boba Fett. Although that one, yeah, the show is not thus far. I'm not feeling any rewatchability either. Uh, although Miss, oh, Mark, I, I've rewatched, I rewatched episodes both already. episodes already. <laughs> No, I've rewatched Obi Wan episodes already a few times. What a nerd! No, I, I'm really getting that rewatchability, especially. Um, maybe it's because I'm such a prequel fan, too. Oh yeah, to be fair, I'm not a prequel fan, except for who's your prequel <laughs> fans? Who's here as a prequel fan? Oh, I, I like the prequels. I, I like I like aspects of one and two, but I love episode three. So. I hated Phantom Men- Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. Uh man, this ready set. Co- Ready said podcast. We got to get you on the show, man. He's been he's been getting great comments all episode. I haven't seen him before. Ready said geek podcast. This show is an emotional arc from depression, self doubt to self actualization. Who he is in the world of the Jedi and how important he is. Yeah, um, he's got to be. He's, he, he. How can you be more broken to know that you know what happened to your best friend, what your best friend did. Honestly, if you want me to get really real, think about this. Imagine if your best friend in real life, and I don't want to bring it into the real world, but did something on the level of the younglings. That would destroy you. Destroy you. And I think people forget that that actually happened in Star Wars. You know, we don't we, we like this fantasy element, but come on. What did Anakin really do? And this is someone he loved. Can you imagine dealing with that? I can't imagine. I don't want anyone to deal with that. I don't want any of these atrocities to happen. But you really also get the impact of the... It's a great segue to the OG trilogy about how bad the Clone Wars were at the end and and what Anakin did to the Jedi Temple and Younglings. This is a, a horrific event. And... Yes, it was always horrific in Revenge of the Sith, but you're seeing the after effects of now in this series of how, like even in the OG trilogy, they didn't talk about that part much because we didn't know it because it wasn't made yet and, and Lucas didn't write it. But it's something that should really be dealt with emotionally and the character's impact and the character on the universe, the galaxy, like this underworld railroad of Jedi and younglings. Uh... It really talking about redemption arcs. People are like, woo, he gets into redemption. Really, the hardest one to buy now is actually Anakin and Vader after what he did to these those young uh force sensitive people. Uh, I am loving that type of stuff. It's very emotional, impactful. Um now the the things that don't work for me are just the some of the getaway scenes and the leaving people alive and stuff is kind of silly sometimes, but this is a, this is a problem. It's not just isolated to star Wars. It's in all geek culture movies like, Oh, you stabbed me. And then you move away or you almost, you know, everyone comes back and you know, that that's, that's just a, a problem across the board. I mean, and I think awesome. some, I think some of the escape sequences are core in the OG trilogy or the prequels that George did instead of just the silly, you know, mm. that's that's my only problem. But but I could deal with it. God, it must be so hard. What being a nerd? No, like just just like having that inability to just like 
enjoy things let go of yourself into the story and just kind of chill it doesn't matter like you know i'm not a writing expert by any stretch you know so the opinions expressed by me are are, are just some dude that likes to watch sit back chill hi joy dion i hope your fish is okay What's up? I, I mean i i don't know i mean there's no shame in saying you, your expectations were let down i mean there, you should ha- there should be a standard when it comes to like certain people reprising their roles as characters well, we love characters and <laughs> wanting to see them improve more or wow. grow more as characters i i, I, mean, I don't know is, this is some of the best uh obi-wan acting we get in all of the star wars movies i, I like i like it but the, I acting, like, the acting's not the problem it's just the material that they're asked to work with i think is the problem i, I can agree that, our, that our, it has been kind of underwhelming despite me liking the show and it's like I, I agree to as well as well about the rewatchability and obviously the i think some of the action is lackluster and I, I'm not gonna. I'll say this. It could be core. It could be core. Like, it could be. It could be. I mean, I did the Reva. The Reva um action. I think was probably my favorite one because it's actually more fast paced. I get it. That, there's reasons why we haven't really seen that crazy much that crazy action with Obi Wan because of obviously it's been like probably like ten years since he's even, he's even fought with lightsaber or anything like that. And obviously there are some struggles with him. So I get it. it's more of an emotional journey than a physical one when it comes to Obi Wan. Um, but I, I I don't know. There's lots of problems with that. Even the character of Reva, I just I'm not gonna lie. I could do without her in the show. And I don't think if there is a season two. I I agree with some people. She should have just died when <laughs> Raider stabbed her. To be honest, but I like her character. I like that she is a youngling that survived. Wow, it, it took it took four ep- it took five episodes for her to finally be interesting. So I mean, hey, oh I damn, <laughs> I agree with that. I agree with that too. I agree with that too. Oh my god, it's you just know, a shame that we're wasting all this oh, time. Like, I, I would have loved what to have gotten to you, see- RJ. I swear to God, I'm, I'm six just months saying. ago, you, you you were farting rainbows on every stream. It's like, guys, this is gonna be the best movie ever. You don't understand. Like, come on, like. Well, keep in mind, this is the man. Did Doctor Strange do something to you? Moon Knight, that likes Moon Knight. RJ, like I did like it? Moon Knight. I think it has what? problems too, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. But I was gonna say, did like did, did Doctor Strange like ruin like was that the, your glass breaking moment for Marvel? Where it's like, and you're just like, <gasps> no, because Miss Marvel, I think is done. I mean, I, honestly, Miss Marvel. The, I mean, I've only I haven't seen the second episode yet, but that's been outstanding thus far. I was really blown away and surprised, but I was really happy with it. Um, no, I still love Marvel. I just think that I think Star Wars just has a high bar uh, standard, right? And when stuff it doesn't meet that high bar or doesn't meet the I level the of quality, where it... well, I think I think <laughs> everybody in this panel has different bars. So I think that, that that's what we're talking about. Like that bar I, I just have a lot of issues with the. Produ- I, I think the production of this show is the biggest problem. I think from a directing and writing standpoint, it's like the biggest like. The, the 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 bone the, the skeletal structure of this show is fine it, it okay it, it, it's like you know how i'm putting this it's like when like you're building a car right you got the instruction like you got the tools to make the car but you don't like you just bumble your way through it and like the engine's busted the wheel's not working right it's like but you had all the tools there, and you're supposed to like know how to build the car, but you don't build the car in the best of ways. It comes out kind of crappy, right? Like hey, it works. It gets to where you need to go. Watching, but... Please smash the like button. Help the show go on. Yes. Yes, Anthony. Um, I have no bar. <laughs> actually, I think I think the directing. I think that I. I like Deborah. I'm sorry, but, I but think there people... was like the action in this episode should have been awesome, but it was ruined by I... really crappy shaky cam. There was way too much I... shaky cam. I, mean, I, 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 felt, I felt I was watching like, remember, you guys remember the first Hunger Games movie? How bad the shaking cam <laughs> was in that? Like, it was almost Karen, to that I level. It was like, doesn't really that, crap. Doesn't that, what about doesn't the snake eyes? That... Doesn't that <sighs> add intensity and the wildness to like the shootout though with the, the refugees and the empire? You can so do I, like listen. Paul Greengrass does shaky cam well, right? And that's that's in the uh, the born like in the born movies. The shaky cam works, right? But you still have a clear idea of what's going on. And this, the shaky cam was like so unprofessional, so tacky, tacky in a way where it's just like it was like my brother was leaning over to be like. I can't look at this. It hurts my eyes. I'm like, I don't blame you because, like, the way like it's being framed, it just does not work. Like, especially when it's like in a tight corridor like that, you know. And this is actually like technical directing stuff here. Like, you're in like a tight corridor like that, and you're well, shaking the camera. I that am way. surprised after seeing this. 
uh, my stock in Deborah Chow has gone down a little bit. Like I was, they gave her. She is the first. I don't one blame her got, though. I don't no, blame no, her. I think the show just had director. a lot of production she's a good director, issues. But they, she, she's got the. She got. She is the one that first got a whole directing series to herself, though. That's like that's important. Again, though, I don't blame Deborah Chow. I honestly blame. The anyone, right? I blame the restructuring of this show because I had so many production issues in the writing department, where I felt like they were like reshooting and reworking things all the time, and that's not easy to do. When you're constantly reworking a show, so. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I liked it. Uh, we're team. Me and Brian are team Kenobi. Who's here, team Kenobi? Who's here, team RJ? I'm team Kenobi. Kenobi. I don't know. I'm playing for both sides to see who wins. Oh, in of course end. you are. Sure you are. Eh? Which one's offering me the most money? <laughs> no one's offering you any kidding. money, Isaac. You still got to pick. I'll give you five dollars. Yeah, that, that's what. Oh, there I'm we go. I'm going to give you five bucks. I'm not giving that's you shit. How you, that's how you do business. I'm just kidding. I'm I'm kidding. Kidding. <laughs> so we're officially split here in MME. We're Okay, so we have two for two and a half. And then we got a know, neutral party. Eddie, and then we got fucking two and a half. Wait, I said Kenobi. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, wow. I'm Team Brian. Here. Yes. You know what? I'm Team Brian. There we go. Wait, no. teat, the teat of you? <laughs> I'm just gonna say the rest of the rest of you guys are bitter. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't spend time like hyping this show up at all. So everything I've watched thus far has been very exciting. It's not, not bad. It's not like I want to clarify. Like, there's a lot of stuff yeah, I, I didn't liked hype it in up this. At all. Like, I love, like, like the Vader stuff is always great. I mean, that action sequence of lightsaber duel, kind of with the uh, Reva and Vader, was dope. The flashbacks that we did get were really well executed. I love the dialogue between the wall, between Reva and Obi-Wan, where you get the backstory of Reva. That was really good. It's just everything else was just blah, you know? All right. It's like every episode, it's like everything kind of is really good stuff. There's also really, really mediocre stuff, like bounces it out. Oh, wow. People, lots of people are Team Brian. See? Thank you, Ashley. The Jedi is the only one. Axel. So, what do I think about the show? The first Rating episodes, Obi -Wan. Well, episode really five, good. episode five. Yeah, I know, I know, but like, I just want like, I haven't told you guys my what opinion on the overall show. But like, and then episode three and four, they just felt, I don't know, they just felt like they just wanted to rush the entire thing just to get to the last few episodes. That's the thing, like, yeah. Okay. People are hard to please nowadays. That's all we. Brian, let's just. Yeah, I'm, I'm, really really not, I'm really not that hard to please, though. I I like most stuff. Like I'm pretty easy. I feel like I'm pretty easy. That's what she says. Oh. Okay, relax. Still, like Sean says, you're just mad about Cal Kestis not being in it. <laughs> no, I honestly okay, don't, I don't care don't about that. There's time. Zeno, There's time. Zeno, that's not cool. That's not cool to say that. I'm going to give you a warning there. Don't don't suggest anyone to anyone else. Everyone has their own opinions. Oh. That's a warning. Okay, I guess everyone be cool. <laughs> Uh, if you're going to keep criticize people, that's fine, but don't suggest they're just the carbon. Copy. Also, it's a dumb thing to say because he likes the show more than I do. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so so yeah. yeah you trying? Yeah, you trying to say um, RJ's a RJ's a puppy for okay. the dark? Side. Okay, well let's not let's not <laughs> listen when I when I try to correct the flow of the conversation. Don't let's not harp on it either. Let's move on. Okay, I mean, yeah, you uh, might as well make fun of the the thing too. You know, okay. at the time. All right. So, <laughs> Axel, you were saying. So, uh, yeah, like the l last night's episode, I really liked it. I thought, like, some, like, yeah, it still had some issues. Like, like, yeah, it, like with the fight scenes, I was like, oh, okay. Like, we haven't seen Reva use the, like, her double bladed lightsaber. And we, we haven't seen her, like, fight Obi Wan that much. Now, yeah, like, it's, that's a bit of a nitpick, I'll admit. But like, still, um, I like Leia in the show. I she's in it more than I expected it to be. Uh, it actually, I like, I want it to make sense, but I want, but I want it to see the whole series for so I can understand it well. Um, like, I think like Obi Wan just giving like, like his lightsaber and a gun to the guy from Silicon Valley, like just. I think like you don't know this guy. He's a freaking smuggler, so I don't understand. And yeah, just I don't know. Just like I, it's a shame. I really like the last like episode three and four. I really did not like. 
it was just they were just stalling just to get to the last few episodes and they didn't i don't know it just and yeah the vader Darth vader was very good i feel like disney like is doing Darth vader really good even though disney hasn't done palpatine or boba fett very well like they still they're still getting Darth vader right that, that's what okay. i'm happy about and and i really like obi-wan in the show i do want to see more joel edgerton and yeah and i thought we'd be on tatooine like so much more like we were on tatooine and oh Boba i'm so Boba happy Fett though i'm doing. so happy we're not on tatooine i got sick of it but i'm like oh my god i need to go somewhere else like show me some other plants i'm actually that's one of the best parts about the show in my opinion getting to see new worlds I agree. Mm, and yeah, I, I like seeing Alderaan again. That now that was like real, I because that was something I was not expecting to see. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm... But, and yeah. Hey, come on! I'm putting you. In, you know, come on. Right, what hey, Listen, I was trying. I, was, I, I just no, said just be oh, professional. Wait. Yeah, but you you were taunting oh. him too, though. Both of you stop it, but don't say don't say f. Someone was saying f him the other day. And he's saying, e no, we're not going to have that because then that gets the whole chat. I'm putting in a timeout and <laughs> sorry. Go to the corner. Don't say, don't say eat it or F you. Come on, everyone. Go I've dealt with it. And, and yeah. I'll call you later, Zeno. We'll talk about that. I'll call you later. Yeah. All right. You know, if, if you take my call, but come on. Yeah, at girl. Eventually, I'm going to say <laughs> your problems are not my problems. And in, 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 in RJ and Zeno need to go get a room. Get this out of here. I can't control either one of you. Either one of you. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, okay, Devin, no excuse. <laughs> All right. So I think there's a lot that there's a lot of great things in there. There's definitely criticisms. Uh, it's still fun. Um, we're going to get to other topics here. I did want to hear what RJ has to say about Riri Williams and Ironheart. Oh, wait, let's see the. Uh, Axel, that's There's awesome. Um, okay. mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, oh, oh, look. And here's what I did. Oh, that's really yeah, cool. Officer. And yeah. Nice, dude. Awesome. Nice. So, awesome. what do you want to ask me about Riri Williams? Um, that was the main one of the main topics tonight. We we did a little, we watched a video on Riri Williams. Yeah, she I caught that a little bit. Yeah. Start, starting filming. Are you familiar her with show, the I, No. Okay, so if you've not watched um, Judas and the Black Messiah, which had um, Keith Stanfield and Daniel Kaluuya in it, she has a very small role in that, but I thought she did a great job. Um, she's a really talented young actress. I think she's in like her early to mid-20s, uh, Dominique Thorne. Um, I think that she's going to do a good job. I'll be honest, though. This is not a character I know that much about. I have no connection to Riri Williams. I know nothing about her, just that she's a very controversial character because her comic apparently was like, blah. It came out like at that time when Comicsgate was a thing. So I, I have no expectations for the show. I hope it's good. I mean, I'm always up for seeing new characters. I just don't have any connection to this character. So I'm hoping to make a lot of changes to make her more likable. So I don't know. Well, yeah. how come the character wasn't likable? Uh, um, it just <sighs> was she just play? like was she just uh, know, she was like, seen as like a woke character being introduced to like replace Iron Man and stuff, uh, and like uh, her storyline didn't really appeal to a lot of people. I mean, there was a did, lot of dumb did that thing happen with there. Miles Morales? Like, did he get that kind of shit? Like when he was kind of well, actually... not as badly, kind of but not as badly. He did. Oh, okay. though. He's he's gotten in more so recently from people like Young Ripa. Oh fuck, Ashley. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I we did a little back. We watched a little background video, and it seemed a really cool character. The biggest concerns that I had while watching that video is how they're going to how Disney's going to handle her origin story about um, the park where her not don't don't mention what it is because we don't want to get demonetized. But a, an event happened in a park where her father in law. And her best friend, unfortunately, passed. Uh, and that being the impetus to start her on her journey to want to protect people. And then also uh, the relationship to Tony Stark. How are they going to handle that now that we're in a past post-endgame world? Uh, we may have some breaking news. 
Are you serious? Uh, come on. Well, it, 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 well, it depends. It's breaking news in the world of professional wrestling, but this may have big implications for our movie talk. Oh, my God. You're so it may actually this. be breaking news. You're going to make me do this for wrestling? Okay. Breaking news! So this is from Raj Geary saying that I'm hearing Sasha Banks has been released. I don't know if it's that she requested it or if it was on WWZ end. Sasha Banks was, uh, that's Mercedes Vardes. She was in The Mandalorian season two. She's one of the Mandalorians. So she may have just gotten fired from WWE. There's been a lot of going on with that backstage politics and bad creative decisions going on and then having disputes. So if she's released from WWE, she may have a, like a huge acting career in the future. It means you might see her more in Star Wars. I don't know about that. I don't know. I think she's talented. I don't know. We'll see. Wait, who, maybe wait, she, who maybe, she she, maybe it and, just means she's going to AEW. I don't know. Who did she play in Mando? She was one of the Mandalorians in Bo Katan's like school. Oh, that, oh, that woman. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Mercedes Renato. Thank you. I forget her last name. Oh, I thought it was Ferrari something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where I would get fired from, though. RJ got fired from. God damn it, Ryan. Okay. Well, any other thoughts about Ironheart? This is a character. The reason I brought it up is they're starting the series, Wakanda Forever, and she's going to appear in two Disney Plus series right after Wakanda Forever with. Iron Heart and Iron Wars. Oh yeah, that's right. We're getting Iron Wars as well. Uh, yeah, the Don Cheadle led like, series. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I think like I think I I like I, I really like War Machine. I think he should have gotten spotlight more, and I'm glad he is going to get to soon. Even though I'm probably not going to watch the show because it's MCU and it's probably just going to be the same. Did you hear about a uh, um, Jerry Seinfeld's Pop Tart movie? Mm -mm. No. Jerry What's Seinfeld's making a, pop, a movie about Pop Tarts uh, for Netflix, I think. Or is it for Netflix? I don't remember who it's for. But it's, they just cast uh, Melissa McCarthy, Jim Gaffigan, Hugh Grant, James Marsden, and wait for it, Amy Schumer. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it sucked all the energy out the room right there. I like Amy Schumer. Did you guys talk about the? the did, you talk, did you guys talk about the Barbie movie at all? The what? The Barbie movie? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I could bring that up next. Uh, I got it actually right for you. Well, we got our first look at one of many Kens. So we got our first look at Barbie, right? And here's Ken, played by Ryan Gosling. What? The, that's where it's from. I saw that early on my timeline. I'm like, what is that? Is that I thought that was just some. Dumbass Photoshop. I'm like, oh, that's no, this is real. real. What the so hell? the plot of this movie is yeah, going to be multiple. There's multiple Barbies and Kens. So Margot Robbie and and Ryan Gosling are the main Barbie and Ken, but there's like two other pairs. Uh, one's played by Issa Rae, and the other Ken, and the other Ken's played by Simu Liu. Simu Liu is Ken. Yeah. So Brian, when Why you came to MME tonight, did you think we're going to talk about Ken, Barbie and Ken? You know. What do you think of this, Brian? <clears throat> Speechless. You're muted, Brian. You're muted. Um, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think, well, listen, nice I abs, think... dude. Respect, uh, bro. But yeah, no. I, I I appreciate that he has his name on his underwear. Thank though. you, widow. A little modesty would go along. Would go along. Oh, I thought it said Kelvin Klein. No, his underwear says Ken. It's a play on Calvin Klein, though, yeah. Thank you, Darth Vader. I agree. Padme is better than Barbie. Um, It looks a little cringe to me. I think it's kind of the point, though. It's meant, like, you have to understand, this is meant to be kind of a co comedic and meta take on the property. There's multiple I am and going, cans. They're kind of poking gonna, fun at it a little bit. I should have fun with it. I should have put this as a thumbnail with my head on it. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, like, that's believable. Man, it's not too late. Yeah, wow, that's <laughs> mean. Damn. Better than the one that you put my head on. Uh, oh, wait. Dark, double standards, the movie. Yeah, would they have done that to, to Barbie? I don't know. 
Is that what you're saying? Uh, it's Marco Robbie. Yes, they are. <laughs> I mean, like, what? What are you saying? Like, it's it's Marco Robbie. They're gonna dollar up just as much. It's kind of the whole point. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's interesting. Uh, they're doing a lot. I think it. I think it'll be a big. I think it'll be a big movie. Honestly, I doubt that I'm gonna go uh, seek this movie out. You will. That, that means you're sexy. Trailer's gonna come out. Max is gonna be like, "Barbie's the next best thing ever." Oh my god! It's a. I'm, I want to live in a Barbie world. What do you eat now, Eddie? Ice cream. Oh no! Not the ice cream. No, not again. again. Yeah. Uh, no, don't focus on it. fucking Eddie over here. Oh, ice cream. Oh god. Why would what? Our views are going up. Our views are going up. Man, this Go isn't a book, man. Get the damn screen off my face. No, man, Eddie. Eddie, Eddie, this is content, brother. Think about it. Think about it. Bro. You sense, sit there. Sense, you eat a pint sensual. of Ben and Jerry's a night, bro. You'll put up, probably put on a lot of weight. You no, know, but I dude, wear my. Think of the views, now. man. Okay. Uh, hey, thank you, H. Bartz. Uh, H. Bartz says two dollars. Is anyone worried about Thor being too short? I would prefer it be longer, but I don't think it's gonna because I mean, there's, there's a lot of characters. There's concern. Mm -hmm. I'm not too worried about it. I don't know. Yeah. But that doesn't Ooh. mean it's gonna be bad. It's just I, when there's more characters, I want a bit longer movie. Honestly, <laughs> That's what ready said geek geeks exactly. It's an Eddie mukbang where he's just gonna sit there and eat ice cream for an hour and a half. I got this gal and a Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> Let's take it down. He gets like halfway through and starts. Because come on, he's oh, yeah, be yeah, I would got the, Yeah, I would definitely would had to go to bed. I could barely that. finish a pint, dude. No way. <laughs> well, I I also want not to dwell on what happened with the timeout earlier, but I will comment on this. Even though my friends can't stand each other, I can't have in the chat the fus towards him the other day in the live stream, or eat this in the live stream. That gets the chat all worked up, and that makes it people think that it's acceptable to talk like that we could criticize everyone we could throw us a little pokes and jabs but when you get to the and that wasn't cool what was said to to zeno the other day either f zeno f zeno we got to stop this stuff because what do you no, what's fair, the end no, what's the what's the end goal am i going to get rid of zeno or rj oh, the love? no i don't want to get rid of anyone unless it's absolutely necessary it's not and i don't want and i like everyone so my problems are not your problems, but I cannot have the chat saying, "F you or eat I this." Don't say that. That's rude. Then, then, then it's gone too far, and then you're going to get in a timeout is nothing. That means cool off. Everyone can t stop taking things so personally. I don't want the chat because then some in the chat start saying "F you too." And that's, I, have a, I have an idea to fix this. It's well, it's my show, but yes, go ahead, RJ. We get rid of you. Uh, 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 wait, what? All right, it's my show now. And Ooh, <laughs> take no, no, no. People are already no, not funny. People are already suggesting that RJ's taken over. Okay, I'm sorry. Look, Ashley fun, says, but... yeah, Zeno is a friend of mine. You obviously, you guys can't get to, you know, you got, you got to chill too, RJ. You can't say, just leave it go. Just comment on something else. Just ignore each other. God damn it, you know, just ignore each other. Woo. No, uh, that's fair. Okay. All right. Let's get to other topics because I don't want to dwell on. Holy! Bullshit. What? There's an explosion. Okay. What? Oh what my happened? God! See, did you guys check Bradley's Twitter? Wait, There's what? an explosion in Vegas. No. Oh, what? I don't want to. I don't want to cover. There's an tragedies. explosion on the street or something like a car uh, blew up. Oh jeez. Hold on. Oh, okay. Wow. Like All right. So that's just going forward to, to keep the streams going going well because bright bright also for everyone else involved, we have to respect other people. People in the chat, Brian and other people on the panel don't want to deal with this shit on a daily. We were here to have fun. So we're still friends with everyone, but chill out everyone. Take a chill pill, like Brian, you know. Get some aspirin and chill out. Uh probably or a Tesla. Some or some of this stuff in my hand right now that I'm not going to show. 
Yeah, yeah, please don't. Please don't. Darth Vader, there was an explosion when I found Kenobi. <laughs> Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah. there was. Oh. Uh, all right, let's get to this other topic, which is kind of this is other Marvel news. Um, I'm I'm really disappointed. I'm really disappointed in Ashley and RJ that they're you're not more excited about Riri Williams. I really, I'm I mean, really. She's just not one of my favorite characters. I don't know what her about, very well. What about? What about what? Are you, are you sure it's a character you have a problem with, RJ, or something else? Huh? Exposed, RJ. I didn't, I didn't understand what he said. Oh my goodness! I said, are you sure, sure it's a character you have a problem with, RJ, or something else? No, I have no problem with the show or the character. I just not just you know just not for me. I never got into that character. <laughs> okay, uh, back pedaling like a motherfucker right now. <laughs> All right, like well, said, RG, it's, a, it's okay. Look, if you if you had that certain rope in your closet, it's okay, man. You know, I still support you yeah. no matter what. <laughs> You're hoping for great things. My yeah, friend, sure I, have I, I have a problematic for it. I have a problematic pronounce Riri. Like it sounds like something else. I don't. I don't know. I didn't Isn't that how you're supposed to say? Doesn't sound bad. Doesn't sound wrong to me. But I don't know. Maybe. Let's be careful. R e e r e e. Is that how it's pronounced? Re re. I, I would like. Yeah, he like that. That would have been something else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to other topics. Let me see if I'm. Uh, can, oh, it's Rary. Rary Williams. I want to see her, Riri. <laughs> oh, okay. That Riri? Works. Riri. Riri. Yeah, that's, I want to see the Riri. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. That no, was don't, Riri, don't, not Riri. Don't, don't <laughs> Riri. <sighs> okay. I don't understand it. What's going on anymore? Need it. We need it. Well, Marvel director shares promising update on MCU Halloween Disney Plus special. There's going to be a lot of these Disney Plus Halloween specials. Mm, I have a well, it's not. It's not really a Halloween special. It's just a World by Night movie. That's all it is. Okay. Well, for as long as this Marvel Cinematic Universe has been around, you know, with all of that's achieved, somehow the studio behind some of the biggest franchises in the world has never released a holiday special. To some, to the relief of some, the streak will come to an end this year with James Gunn the like Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. In addition to the venture with the iconic band of space. Sparing, sparing misfits, fans can also look forward to a separate spooky Hollywood theme outing. Oh, I thought that said farting. I was like, what the? <laughs> Why would uh, they do that? Oh, what have I done? It's Marvel, right? Come on, fart jokes. Okay, <laughs> okay can we get it? Um, in addition to the adventure with the iconic band, okay, a separate spooky Halloween theme outing. What's it all about? All rumors and reports indicate that it will be centered on the Werewolf by Night comics, though the project may go by a different name when it hits Disney+, Plus, which will be probably be around October, given its Halloween roots. As the title will indicate, the story will focus on Werewolf, potentially one of the original bearers of the title, Jack Russell. Any further plot details remain under wraps over the, the rumblings that Man-Thing could appear as well. Uh, well, the plot is a mystery, despite Marvel Studios not officially acknowledging the project's existence, it's been confirmed that well-known composer Michael Giacchino will be directing directing the Halloween special. Wait, He's what? actually oh, directing the composer? Jeebus. Scared the crap out of me. Oh, like a... What? There's a giant bolt of lightning outside. Yeah, I heard oh, it too. Okay. I was like, what the hell is that, man? <laughs> you heard the thunder. You didn't hear <laughs> lightning. Come on, guy. Well, sorry. He... You know, uh, here's an interview. Giacchino noted it's an incredibly challenging process, but it's been having a blast. And the newly minted director hopes that they'll share a lot more about very soon. And this is very interesting. Has there ever been a composer slash director like this? Um, not that I can not. not that comes I can't think of head. anyone. I mean, this is a pretty unique situation where a composer is going to be both composing and directing. So, assumedly. I think this is pretty woke. Okay, I'm messaging someone. <laughs> I've been having a blast. That's incredibly challenging process. I love it and have every day. I've been having fun working on it. We're in the middle of it, and hopefully very soon we'll share a lot more about it. 
yeah, but there's not much I could say other than I'm having a good time and I'm working on something I love. So, I mean, that's a win-win right there. Um, I'm really excited about the project. I I don't know if I would rush out to theaters, but I'm happy these specials are going to be on my Disney Plus subscription. Oh, and, okay, John Ottman was a composer and he was an editor. So that's kind of something like that. Yeah, I'm editing in in soundtracks could go long. It's very intriguing to find a director, though. Um, yes. Okay, so I'm I'm excited for this. I like Michael Giacchino. Isn't he the one that did Rogue One? Uh, he's done a lot of stuff. He's done Rogue One. He did all the Spider-Man, Tom Holland movies. He did the Batman. Star Trek. He did Star Trek. Yeah, he did Star Trek. He did the mm. soundtrack for Up. Okay, can I ask why? Can I ask why? Why was the Imperial March playing a lot in the Batman? I just want to know. I like that. I didn't, I didn't hear the Imperial March in the Batman. I kept hearing that stupid something what in the way song. Da, 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 da. Sounds a lot that's like not the, da, That's not the Imperial da, March, da, though. Da, da. No, that People sounds like, like it. No, that's... Dun, 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 dun. That's the fucking Nirvana song. Just played <laughs> over and over and over fucking again. Well, that I don't know. There's just something in the way of this. Exactly. Thank you. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Uh, see here, we're gonna highlight my Ooh. comment. All right, this is why I don't like movie talk anymore. Okay, see, I hear the word potentially, and I cringe. Wait, was that word used in the article? And any catch? Yes, the... it was. yes, yes, it was. Wait, what did it say? What did yeah, it say? Potentially, it was. It, it used the word potentially. Werewolf. Okay, so that means to me that like this is somebody that potentially has inside information. Okay, I'm cringing. Okay. <laughs> I see the potential of things. I can't help it if you get triggered and not by that. seeing the no. Okay, so here's the thing. Okay, I was talking about this the other I night, see right? the last and I'm just gonna bring up the Last Jedi for a freaking second. Okay, I blame oh, Collider boy. video for ruining well, it on YouTube. Video. Okay, no, no, like remember Collider where they'd have the Jedi Council every week and they'd they'd sit around and this is where we really kind of got into John Campia for a hot minute where they'd sit there Christian Harloff and all that crap. Okay. They would sit there and be like, oh, my God, so-and-so is going to be in this. It was like Mike Zero, okay? So, like, when you sit there and you go watch the movie, The Last Jedi, and you're all hyped up because, like, they just speculated the, the living daylights out of it, and you don't see any of that, what do you do? You go home and you rage about it on the internet. So, yeah. I, I, I think that's, like, I'd rather watch the movie and talk about the movie and what I want, want to see than... Like, hey, bro, this so and so says, I do get triggered by weird things, Anthony. I'm sorry. I'm just trying. I'm trying to be. Well, that's genuine. all of us, though. Don't worry. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to be a little more genuine. And this is kind of what's been bothering me lately. So, uh, you know, I just kind of had had the words, you know. <laughs> okay, hold on. I was gonna say that Go was ahead. kind of funny. No, I don't know. I, I don't know what the hell that was in the chat, but that was kind of funny. Which one? Oh. I I, I, oh, I, no, I didn't get that bell. because I thought it was yeah. someone messing with someone. I don't know. Maybe it is, but I got to laugh that. That screen name is pretty funny. Doctor. Okay, I'm sorry. Wait, I, wait. Maybe I was trigger happy. I don't want to be trigger happy. I mean, that is, a, that is a picture of me. I mean, okay. which is fine. I don't care. It was, it was oh, okay. Funny. Okay. All right. I didn't know if someone was trying to. Wait, what All else? right. See, let's I, get back. I, to, let's get I back to. Agree. I get to other topics. Um, then, we'll, then we'll wrap up the show shortly. Yeah, you can uh let me see here i'm i'm i gotta track this show down have people been enjoying and i had to take my mask it's too hot um summertime oh uh, let me get to Zeno here remember that bs rumor article that somebody believed was hard that amber heard was getting cut off i believed it amber heard addressed it it's fake news i mean well, to play devil's advocate for a moment, though, what's Amber Heard going to say? Oh, it's true. I'm getting cut out of this movie that I'm, you know, was a big break in my career. Of course not. To be fair, though, too, the, this is what I said when we first talked about it. Although it was somewhat breaking, right, the source was kind of iffy. But I'm glad that that clarification has been out there. Again, this is, it is a developing situation. Hopefully we'll know more as time goes on. Uh, they're we do know for a fact though they're testing different versions of the movie. Some have 
no Amber Heard scenes. Some have five minutes of Amber Heard scenes. Some have 10, 20, you know? So her role is definitely not that big if the most that she's in is maybe 20 minutes. So we'll see if they cut it down or what they decide to do with that. So it's just one of those things you got to just pay attention to and see how it develops. I honestly think they should only because of the added thing with Johnny and removing him from Fantastic Beasts. So keeping her and well, right, it's it. like you don't want you don't so want there to more, be a double standard or to come right. out off looking. And I think it, I think it, I think honestly, marketing wise, you can make a lot of money, more money by saying we did this, and you know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't want them to get involved with um, Johnny Depp anyway, either. Uh, Zeno, what what are you doing? Come on. We're, come on. You get back in here. Stop it, please. Stop it. Both of you going at each other. Our, I told RJ, RJ's going to try to abide by it, too. Don't, don't get personal. Uh, don't say people are, you know, let's move on. We have other topics. Uh, Nerdette is here. Amber isn't going anywhere in Aquaman 2. Okay. Um, I, I Nerdate, you've been covering this a lot. Are you sure? You really think that they're not going to, it'd be a, it'd be worth, they, worth they the investment. Could, they they, they could leave dollars, her but. in there just to be respectful and not like not cross any boundaries in terms of contractual obligations or contracts. Just be like, okay, we've fulfilled your contract for this movie. You're in it, but they can control how much he's in it. She could still be in it and not be in it very much. That's kind of the whole thing. Um, so it'll depend. I don't see her continuing after this movie, though. I think we can all at least agree on that. That's I think it would be really opinion, great though. for the marketing to get the first trailer and it not be Amber Heard's Mara. I think that would make a lot, get a lot of positive buzz. Uh, I so I think it's a, there's a reason to do it. You can make money off of it. If you can make money off of it, it, I mean, look what they did for yeah. wasn't it harder to replace uh, the character for Kevin Spacey? Uh, what was that? Wasn't that about as much time? Um, but that was a different case though, because that care that uh the the movie I you're talking about Kevin Spacey got replaced by Christopher Plummer. That role was so small though; it wasn't like a major role, right? Mm. So, okay, that's kind of just um, the thing. I mean, I don't. Know I mean, I would I would strongly consider if it's possible, and if if I know it will increase the budget, but I think it's worth it to a point, honestly. I mean, they could. I mean, again, it's going to be a developing situation. We have to see what they do. And that actually would be smart, too. They put less Mira, but they put in more Michael Keaton Batman scenes. That'd be cool, actually. Okay. All right. What? So, Michael Chucky, Keaton. has anyone been watching this series? I have not seen it, but everyone I, I like it. I, I, everyone who has watched this told me it's amazing. So. It's good. Oh, you do? Where do you watch it at, Eddie? It's on sci fi. Sci fi. I don't have to. Do you have to pay for that one? It's it's one of the most basic cable channels, as far as I'm aware. Okay. Yeah, pretty sure. Heard much if you have any kind of cable, it's there. So, but I think you can probably buy it on Blu-ray too at this point too. So I don't know. Chucky, I might like to check it. I I thought the movie with Mark Hamill, the reboot, was decent. Oh, what is this? Hold on a second. Damn it! Where'd it go? Oh, hold on. Um, so I want to, I want to search it out. I think my, my wife would enjoy it. Um, it's just, I'm not going to pay for, or to, to see it. I'd like it to appear on a streaming service. I already have. I've gotten to the past of the point where I can't do any more streaming services. It's on Peacock. Um, I don't know if it's on Peacock. I know it's on, um, if you have Hulu live, it should be there. I have Hulu. Okay, so this is a better look at the monsters. I think it looks fun. I don't. I'm not expecting. I a lot don't even. I, I honestly like. I don't know. It's it's not a property that speaks to me. Even if you're a monsters fan, I mean, maybe it, it looks good to you. I don't know. Look at this image. That looks great. I like the visual. I mean, this visual style I mean, it's good is on makeup. Par. It's good makeup. It just I just have no connection with this property. I, I did like the. I only seen like a little bit of it, like the classic shit. But like, I did like the teaser where it's like it shows him in black and white, but then towards the end in color, and then it shows up with the color and all that stuff. But like I said, I don't really have that much attachment with this um either. To be honest, like I said, I don't even know how to watch it. 
Hey, Chan Movie re Reviews. More, if you ever want to come on the show, let me know. I've seen you around YouTube a little bit. Just got out of Lightyear, and it was amazing. Awesome. Yeah, man. I'm excited. I got I got to watch Jurassic World Dominion and Lightyear this weekend. Well, guys, so you know that Lightyear's getting review bombed. <laughs> it is, sadly. I saw that. Yeah, I watched Eddie's video. It's very disappointing to see. Yeah, no, I got so many one star reviews. I was like, that's not even possible. There's yet. a like, lot of review bombing going on, on online now uh, for a lot of uh, stuff coming out lately, which is just well, well, it'd be a lot of it. Yeah. No, no, like read the reviews themselves, you see it. it's woke, it's pandering. I was like, damn, like they flat out just said it, like they have troubles with like the gay kiss in, in the movies. So I was like, that's kind of a shame. Well, Nerdette says Rob Zombie is amazing, but no, I think he's got that hits would and be misses. interesting, though. I will say, Degrassi, that's interesting because you would assume it would go to Peacock if this is a universal film. I would be shocked if it went to Netflix, but maybe they, they could sell it for a pretty penny and license it out. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not impossible. Yeah, um, someone, if you're interested, just follow me at, on Twitter. It's the easiest way to get on the show. Here's my Twitter. Anyone that's in the that wants to follow me there, if you want to come on, have some fun talk, movie talk. I'm actually thinking of, um, let me know, but just as a side topic, I'm thinking of uh, something to do for the community because we, we do a lot of outreach. We, we talk a lot of people. Uh, sort of like a uh, on uh, a mixer event where we get as many people together as we can that are positive focused, hopefully, and meet new people and new stream, you know, new content creators, and to reach out to new people and be like, hey, we're having this like a little event to meet out, meet meet out, uh, help channels that need that little bump and subs uh, collaborate. I'm going to try to put that together along with another ladies' night because that epic ladies' night. Uh, when we're doing the appreciation stream, we realize how much uh, a lot of people met each other that way. And I, I think that's really important in a community and I would love to do that. So I'm yeah. going to try to work on that too, like a mixer event, reach out to some people that are on the outskirts of our um, community that we really haven't collaborated much. Like, Hey, come on, we're going to do this. Yeah. Little no, event it's important. It's important, it's important to network and to reach out to other people always. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I will but say I'm, I'm I, happy I just I just found a very interesting article. All right, we'll bring it up here. I'm not going to. I'm saving it for my show. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, but it, it's so juicy. I have to save it for my show. I'm sorry. What is this bullshit? Okay. Well, I think that, <laughs> I think this looks fun. I think Rob Zombie's hit and miss. You know, uh, hmm. but I I think I do think this is on par with. Um, Tim Burton's type of content, this artistic style. Oh my god! What? What? So good. Wow, shit! It's falling apart. It? Homemade smoked salmon. Ooh, oh, nice. I like salmon. Oh, sorry. No, oh, is it. this true? That's awesome. Uh, I haven't heard anything official, but it seems like it did. I don't know though. That's good because I saw people talking on Twitter today about the one project, the Gotham PD, not might not go through. Well, Gotham PD know. has been converting to an Arkham show. Oh, okay. Arkham Asylum, so. All right. Uh let me get to this. Is uh is Umbrella Academy season three up on Netflix yet? I think it comes out on Friday. Oh, okay, because there's a I review. I'm not gonna it. go to what's that, Eddie? I said I can't wait to watch it. Uh, you you've been following it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've been following it too. Uh, I'm actually it's surprised. Just, it says great. Okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just hard because like it, every, every like, new season the show comes out like years after the, the other one, so it's like it's hard to remember stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, his Halloween movies. I I think there was cool aspects to the Halloween movies. I know people don't like certain things. Decisions. I like that the were first made, one, but. Umbrella Academy is amazing. I I really enjoy it. I mean, I kind of like how, how good they were. I didn't think the numbers justified keep going, but I'm happy. I hope it gets a finale, like they end it, and Netflix doesn't uh, just stop the show. Uh, I've never seen Devil's Rejects. Uh, I think... Go ahead, Eddie. No, I think I think I remember them talking about Netflix that that, that season one had like incredible ratings but i can't remember about the about season two or anything like that but like i said i, I think there's a there's a loyal fan base and it's big enough for them to keep making more content when it comes to umbrella academy 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. They just enjoy it. For what it is, but I don't hear a lot of Umbrella Academy talk out in the real world. So I, I mean, I'm happy it's getting another season, though. Uh, I think it's <laughs> I mean, it was more even on here we never talk about it is Umbrella legacy. Academy. What's that, Axel? I mean, it was more successful than Jupiter's Legacy. Oh, Jupiter's Legacy, I didn't like. I was like uh, yeah, well, yeah, I think I, I, I thought it was on last year. He didn't Great comic too. Their debt says the Umbrella Academy. That's Gerard Way from Chemical Romance. I hear some the new my chemical background. Someone I don't know where it's coming from. The new uh, my chem is pretty I good. Okay. Uh, has anyone been? I have to finish the boys. I've really been enjoying the man. There's some stuff that makes me cringe. I actually have to fast forward some scenes of the boys, but I still want to. <laughs> I can guess which one. <laughs> There's a couple times, a couple times. I know. I think I know exactly which one you definitely just fast forward. <laughs> yeah, I didn't when see comes, the explosion or anything. Yeah, when it comes to the little man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't. I fast forward. I saw the aftermath, and I was like, "Oh, that was Max's favorite scene." No, I didn't no. care. I was just watching the whole time. <laughs> At first, I didn't know which. I shouldn't say this, but I didn't know if he went in the back or the front. At first, I'm like, which. I'm like I'm fast forward and <laughs> no, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it was the front and then he yeah yeah I don't yeah, want to yeah, talk yeah. about it I don't want to talk about it either because that was so weird. <laughs> no, I'm like, why do I have to watch this? I uh, mean, I, I, I was laughing the whole time, but I was surprised the, too. <laughs> is this the Paul Reiser sons? The Renaissance of Paul Reiser? He's popping up everywhere from Stranger yeah, Things. Cool to see him pop up as the leader. Um, so he is going to have a similar type character is like a stan lee for the yeah he's universe. the leader yeah he's the, he's the leader yeah what do you think i like paul riser what was yeah, that show cool. he was in back in the day stranger things no no back in like the 90s or the 80s oh no the character's name is the legend that's what his name he's a parody of stan lee mm-hmm. i don't know has anyone been watching the boys this season i'm not yeah, cut up though so now i'm a loyal fan of the show Brian, yeah, I'm like rewatching the, the entire boys? series right now. No, I haven't watched it yet, but it's okay. on my list of new things to watch. Yeah, well, not even mad, of, not even mad about you, Degrassi. That I wasn't he in that show where there's like two dads being a father. I don't know, something like that. Uh, all right, Bradley, we saw that car explosion, man. Y'all good? All right, so light that? year is getting reviews. It's got 82%. That's really great. Is that low for Pixar or not? Oh, Nerdette, did it? Did it get review bombed? It did, yeah, it did. Oh, I remember I it getting, cover that. I remember it getting review bombed for season two, but that's because people Well, were because they the switched format. like to yeah, they did a weekly instead of a binge. It's it's own fans who love the show review bombed it. I was like, what kind of shit? Actually, is this? since we're since I'm about a review bombing, hold on. That's like the most awkward review bombing I ever saw. So you love the show, but you're mad because it didn't release all at once. So I you're review bombing out of frustration. So we're talking about review bombing. I know Eddie covered this. Figure we take a look. Well, yeah, go currently, ahead. Like I said, it's, it's, currently, it's, it doesn't add up. Look at the rating for Lightyear. 4.7 out of 10. That is really low and bad. Mm-hmm. Like it's like getting Well, this is bombed. IMDb. I know, but it is still like one of the only places that they can... <laughs> Holy Ooh, shit! Look at Just that. because a kiss. Well, let's click on it. Yeah. Let's see. Some of the comments did. Um, it was read, only uh, a kiss. It was only. Where do I kiss. go? Where do I go to see that? Oh, these are. No, that's the thing. I couldn't find it either. But some people were were, were like having switch on the Twitter. I was, I was kept on asking, "Where did you get this from?" Because it wasn't showing the, the one star reviews for me. I don't know why. One star. Maybe we'll work on your end. Awful. If you are a fan of legacy. Toy Story movies, avoid this train wreck so that it does not spoil your great childhood memories. Where does one even begin? It's like not a, a fucking Toy Doo-Doo. Story movie. Jesus Christ. Disney ought to be ashamed of producing such a vile piece of trash. Never mind, actually oh, distributed it. Yeah. I think there was some yeah, I put it, I don't I wanna, put I don't, it on my community tab that were kind of fucked up. Yeah. I'd rather move past this and keep it positive towards the end of the stream because we know that review bombing is a thing. We know people do it and we know 
the usual suspects downplay it uh, for their oh, hateful it, audience. It's well, all facts. Well, today, today we're making fun of Chris Evans for it, for him going against the people who, who don't want to watch it because of that. And oh, yeah. I saw Jeremy in the video, yeah. yeah. Him and Ryan did that. I was like, how is he attacking the fans? He's just saying, you know, if well, you have an issue with that. Let's just... get back to – there's a time and place for this on my channel, but let's get back to the positive stuff I had to end the show. I have, but, I have <laughs> something positive. Well, I want to I want to share this though because I'm really excited. Um, I'm I'm a huge Avatar fan. Avatar: The Last Airbender. Three new movies are currently in works. At yeah, Paramount three Network. animated films. They're animated films oh, coming to animated. theaters and Paramount Plus. Yes. Uh, I kind of want a live action though, but that's on Netflix. Yeah, they're doing something different. Um, I really like. It's Legend gonna have a longtime producer and creator, um, Laura Montgomery or Lord Montgomery, directing one of them, and then uh, Mike and Brian are gonna be um, producing. Has everyone here watched the Avatar series? Oh, absolutely, it's a masterpiece. Yeah, oh, I love it. I can't wait for for the, the three movies animated and... movies, man. Yep. Honestly, the possibilities are endless. I have no clue what they're gonna make or what they're gonna do with it. I mean, could it be like an Avatar Kyoshi movie? Could it be like I know about one of the other Avatars? Google. Could it be like a story set in a different time period? I mean, there's a lot of possibilities of where they can go. Yeah. No, I'm excited for that. The TV shows. I'm even excited for the Netflix show, guys. I still think it could be good. I just had to see more. So we're we're talking. So I found this on. Ron Tomatoes, there you can vote for what you think is the best Pixar movie of all time. Is it Toy Story or Finding Nemo? Mm. Be the best Pixar movie of all Ratatouille. time. Ratatouille. Well, I made it to the final four, but I lost to Finding Nemo. Uh, man, if I can only pick one. I like Finding Nemo better. Than Toy Story? Yeah. What's the best Pixar movie of all time? What's my if it's not out of those two? Yeah, uh, I like Bugs Life because I just have so much fun with it. A uh, Bugs Life is your favorite Pixar? Okay, I like oh, Ratatouille. So I like Wall E. No, I love Bugs Life. No, I'm surprised uh, it's not the Incredibles. It's very, very underrated. Incredibles is fun. Um. Let's name some other ones here. Cars, Inside Out, Turning Red. Cars is my favorite. I love Monsters, Cars. Monsters Inc., Brave. I like Cars. Luca, it was fun. Luca, The Good Dinosaur, yeah, like Soul. I think for me, yeah. probably my favorites are like The Incredibles, Ratatouille, Toy Story, Finding Nemo. Mm -hmm. You know. No Wally, well Wally too. Well, I haven't watched Wally in a long time though. I gotta rewatch it. It's been a long time since I watched it, but it's a really good movie. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm looking at something real quick. Oh, um, now the no, no more cringing on this because this is the in, this is just a conversation starter. It is a geek off the article, but a majority of the articles I today were not. But this Come is on, a good. This is a good, this is a good. This is a good. This is a good conversation starter. Christian Bo Gore, <coughs> Christian, Bale, a conversation Christian maybe. Bale's Gore, the God Butcher, chosen best MCU villain in test screenings. <laughs> so apparently, I don't know if this is accurate, uh, but they're saying, okay, in a recent interview, Taika Waititi talked about how Christian Bale performed in the movie. He said that Christian Bale's portrayal adds to the dynamic of Thor's villains. Waititi revealed, I'd say he's the most sympathetic villain they've had. He's also tested the highest out of any villain that Marvel's had. So if that's accurate, that's a quote from Taika Waititi that he's been testing in test screenings, I guess. He's tested the highest villain. Is that what do you get from that? If that's if that's Taika Waititi saying that, they're saying it's, you know, that's his quote. Uh, what do you think of that? Um, or the God Butcher. I I hope I hope that he's good. I hope he's good. Wow. C cool. I'm 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 gonna go blank so I don't I don't think about this when I go to watch a movie. <laughs> wow, such enthusiasm here. Uh 
Well, I mean, that is one one thing that I think we can can we agree that Marvel's villains have lacked been lacking a little bit. There's been some good villains. Yeah, been some, been some, but overall, uh, the the better characters seem to be the heroes in uh, in the MCU than the villains. And I I want a really impactful villain. Like he, even um, Hela was cool. I don't think she was amazing. Um, what was in Civil War? That was uh, what's that character's name? Baron Zemo. Baron Zemo was all right. Um, the best villains. What's the best villains you've had so far? Definitely Thanos for me and Kingpin. <clears throat> Loki. But Loki, was he yes, really a yeah, Loki was a really for when he was a villain. He was a good villain. Red Skull was kind of a, eh, you know, wasn't wow, that great. Uh, that's really disappointing. What? Um. Shut up. <laughs> oh man, uh, it's just weird because it's sorry. I, I had to bring this up. Mikey's being like really negative uh, on his website. Uh -oh. I'm looking at an article here. He's like crying and foul and saying that Joker Two sucks now. <laughs> oh, uh, I he he made an appearance on my stream the other day, and I said, "Oh, this is a negative slant." Oh yeah, this is the vid this is the article. Yeah. Oh okay, I didn't see this. this fucking shit! Who gives a goddamn? <laughs> <It's> not, it, <laughs> he, he pulled the card. Forget Willem Dafoe. Joker Two is now a Lady Gaga musical. This is not a joke. Certainly, oh it's my too god, late for an April Fool's Day gag. Hey guys, if you give us a hundred likes, we'll drop the next article. We got tea. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me! Not done. <laughs> God damn it! Me went to DC so Films for a get salty, bro. Don't. Like, this is the God, part. This man. is the part that uh, this is actually the part legitimately pisses me off. Right? And if they actually made the Snyder verse, you'd probably fucking hate it. So Jesus Christ, man! Why do you have to shit on everything? Right, right. Look at this. The dance intro to Peacemaker irritated a number of DC followers who expected something darker and more serious. Do you Brace want to yourselves. Taste this? Director Todd Phillips <laughs> leaves the psychodrama 2019's Joker for singing and dancing. Where in this does it say that it's not going to be dark and serious and sophisticated because it's a musical? He's just trying to trigger people. Like yeah, people do always, do the people see, will do. give 100 likes to hear another story. Do you always okay. see oh, that? This is the funniest part, though. Leave it to DC Films for again giving the fans exactly what they want. If you think DC Films grew brain cells by dropping the Wonder Twins, slow down. First of all, it was David, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO, David Zazzo, ki killed the Wonder Twins. Secondly, it was the old. Okay, hold on, though. This is, this part doesn't make any sense because didn't David Zaslaw say he wanted a joke or two? I think so why so, is it now it... that we're saying that it's the old regime that greenlit it? Well, oh, cool. that could, David both Zaslav things could, wants this movie to get made. Yeah, but both things could be accurate, RJ. Zaslav could want it, and it could be the old regime that greenlit it. So it's a it's a slam dunk. It makes it makes the most money fi financial sense for both. Both things could be accurate. It could be the old regime that greenlit it, and Zaslav could also want it to happen too. So it doesn't have to be one or the other. I do have a question. Did mm -hmm. um, Mikey say that Willem Dafoe was going to be in Joker too? No, he, uh, he was, they, he was Ed, propping he, up Edwin Francisco's report that was going to adapt three Jokers as a template, which that apparently was bullshit and never true to begin with. <laughs> but now, but now, okay, so now like, to my talk. knowledge, Philip didn't even consider Defoe for Joker two. Uh, well, I'm on okay paper, with that. a Joker musical sounds awful. Nevertheless, critics will probably salivate over it. Realistically, it's doubtful many comic books will embrace it. What audience is DC Films targeting with this? It's another. Hold on. It's another. It's another slap to the DC crowd. How is this a slap? Because he's, he's not Zack Snyder. He's catering to his audience base. But I thought his audience loved creative uh, ambition and directors getting to make the movies they oh. want to make, though. I have a question. What do we call the fandom? Menace Unless if it's not of, if it's not Zack Snyder, then it's then it's of that. DC. What do we call like the Legion of Doom? Or well, I, like listen. Uh, Keyboard. Keyboard. Sounds cool. We call him Keyboard. Keyboard. Play, Ashton, Snyder blame, Bros. blame RJ no, for bringing blame. this up. I already talked about it yesterday. Well, you're you know I blame you because you brought up Gigosity, so I took a look at their page. Oh God. So all this right, is what happens? We got you brought down the thunder, apparently, Max. 
So you're gonna thunder, have to fucking taste it. Well, we got some. We got. Some, oh, to, I was thinking ACDC's Thunderstruck. To, 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 more, but... to finish this episode, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. we have more <clears throat> Taika. More Taika with TD stuff. Um. Oh, All Star right. Wars comments or something else? Taika Waititi Star Wars will ignore pre-existing characters and will expand the world. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. It's gonna be it's gonna be post sequel trilogy. It'll probably be. Yeah, he's, go, he's gonna Damn voice time. his own character, and he's gonna be the same character like always. All right, well, I have no problem this. with that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> let's read this. When speaking with Total Film, Waititi said he's not interested in making a Star Wars film with pre-existing characters and story threads of telling origin stories for people we already know. Waititi wants to create some new characters. Honestly, that feels like the best decision moving forward. Here's what he had to say. Although, in a lot of people's mind, he revitalized some characters in Marvel. So I wouldn't be opposed to him doing that too, but definitely what he wants to do. Look, I think for the Star Wars universe to expand, it has to expand. <laughs> I don't think that I'm in any use in the Star Wars universe making a film where everyone's like, oh, great. Well, that's the blueprint to the Millennium Falcon. Ah, oh, that's Chewbacca's grandmother. <laughs> that all stands alone. That's great. Though I would like to take something new and create some new characters and just expand the world. Otherwise, it feels like a very small story. Um, everyone on board with this comment so far? I'm sure. Yeah, I agree. I'm happy with this. I want them to do something you new. You either go way I, far back or way far forward. Way far I back or way far in the future. I'm okay with either. Yeah, I don't want to see anything that's in this it's current gotta timeline. It's got to be set in a far, far away. But every time I say that, because I said the same yeah. thing about like Obi Wan, Mandalorian, Boba Fett, in each way they kind of all surprised me. Because dude, I didn't want any of these Star Wars TV shows. I'm like, nah, fuck you, I don't want my, my Star Wars movies. But like every single one of these Star Wars TV shows, in one way or, or another, have like just been, you know, very, very. Um, I mean, surprising to say the least. Especially Mandalorian. I mean, come on, dude. Eddie, enough of that bullshit. No one wants to see this. <laughs> Max has come all over the butcher. <laughs> well, all right, so let's get to this other quote here. Latiti is currently developing Star Wars movie with co-writer Christy Wilson Cairns, an Oscar nominee for penning Sam Mendes 1917. <clears throat> oh, okay. Star Wars has put more focus on the TV side since the stories have found success with critics and viewers there, but the film and isn't being abandoned. Uh, Kathleen okay. Kennedy stressed that total film, that the film slate is always moving. It's actually, to me, it's stalled, but we'll see. I think Taika Waititi is a good place to start to bring it back to theaters. They've been in movement all along. As we leave the saga, we had, we had all this great, exciting work happening on the television side that informed so much about that, where we're going. We want to be very intentional about that. And we have great talent that we're working with, people who care so deeply about what's next iteration of Star Wars is and about getting people back in the movie theaters so we can really come out with a bang. That's important to us. Okay. Uh, listen, do it. I'm, <laughs> I'm sick of waiting for Star Wars to get back in the theater. I'm ready for Star Wars to get back in the theater. Yeah, get it's it. time. Nice Star Wars movie. movies trailer. Don't. Who's ready? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, no, like I said, I I want it. I want there no, to be a new movie already. I've been waiting. Like, where are the I'm movies? Just, surprise me, man! Like, let's go, dude. I, that's one of the things that, like, uh, like I just want to be surprised sometimes when I go watch the movie and, like, dude, like, give me surprise. something that I haven't seen. Like, exactly. Get Axel over here. You don't surprise. Mm -hmm. It's more exciting than what we've gotten. I mean, according that's to everybody true. else, I'm having a good time, but still. I wouldn't be surprised. I want to see some new Star Wars that's not involved with this current canon. So, all right. And then the last article of the night, and then we're gonna we're gonna end. Oh, I thought it was uh, a Brie Larson article. I was like, what? No, uh, it's Come another Taika Waititi. Thor: Love and Thunder director Taika Waititi reviewed. <sighs> wow, he's everywhere now. How he convinced Natalie Portman the stories for me to cover, man. What the hell? Zeros. Um, is this accurate? He had to convince her. Okay. Yes, she she was done with Marvel. She was All done. Right. She wanted nothing to do with it. Well, she said that in the press. Yeah. During a chat with Van Dango, Watiti said he met with Portman and persuaded her to come back for Thor: Love and Thunder. It all came down to the actress being able to have fun. She saw how Watiti changed things tonally with Thor: Ragnarok, and the direction appealed to her because it was clear they're doing something very different compared to the first two appearances. 
I went to her house and she gave me a glass of water. I think that we did. I think that what we did with Ragnarok was it made these movies appealing to other actors as well. Like Christian Bale really, he saw that and he was like, I want to do something fun. Yeah, it does seem like he per, he uh, has a fun environment for creatives. You know, that's that, yeah, it's, it's basically those movies, movies are like movies. giant They're parties. Fun. We'll just have fun making them. Mm -hmm. They're fun and movies. Came, and came here, wanted to be part of this thing. And Natalie, too. Uh, and I think that she was just wanting to make sure that I don't even know how to say this, but her character in those first few <clears> films, <throat> it's probably not the most exciting version of the female character that we want from these films. I had to just talk to her about the fact that I wanted to change that character, just like that we changed Thor's character for Ragnarok and give her a little bit more license to be adventurous and fun because Natalie's a really funny person. And sometimes these sort of things cannot, I don't know, they're not the main focus when they come up with the characters, you know, in films. So yeah, Natalie, girls just want to have fun too, you know? Um, girls just want to have fun. Oh God! Really? Jeez. Come on, oh, man! Sydney Lauper, man! Stop Come it. on! Stop it! <laughs> this isn't karaoke night. Um, uh, it sure. will be we soon. Could, we could do it. Sure, I'm not. Not no, on a Wednesday not, night. Not tonight. No, not tonight. Maybe on the Everybody week. wants to have fun. You want to know why Thor Ragnarok was such a great movie? Because it was yeah. fucking fun. It was the last. It's the fun. It's my. It's my favorite Marvel movie, hands down. Because it's fun. I. I that movie even if it had cringe humor you know what screw you okay the cr marvel cringe humor is way better than dc cringe humor so meh, get some all right the funny thing is the people that come complain about crunch humor do you see their content on their youtube like yeah, this, right, your humor yeah. your humor is like not my you know it's like everyone Josh, is so critical nerds and yeah cringy. super cringe you could just say what you're gonna Brand say, but nerds. I mean, you got to get them clicks and you got to get people to feel, you know, for you on the on the, on the live stream. So I get it. It's a game. We all play it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's where we're gonna end. Oh wow, nice, awesome, Axel. Yeah, that's just what I'm doing here, and yeah, <clears throat> it's for my DC Star Wars thing. Oh wait, did you guys see the trailer I I made like a couple of days ago, like for but I'll send you the link actually. There's no there's... copyright stuff in it, is it? Um music. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean there is music, but it's like it's YouTube uh, music, so it's like and it's free to I use. Prefer, I right. would prefer to enjoy it after we end the stream. <laughs> no offense, no. Axel, because we get through oh, a whole no, stream like, and then I, right at the end. <laughs> can I show you like uh can I show you show it to you without the volume? Uh, let me see. Let me take a look at it. Hold on. It's only like 55 seconds long. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'll bring it up. I have it now. Hold on. This is awesome. Hold on. No volume, just in case. Uh, this is what Axe was working on, I believe. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah, this is really dope already. Nice. I like Great the work, character man. designs a lot. <laughs> Go check out also Axel's channel where I, I'm sure you could find a lot more info on this as well, right? You want to link your channel up? Yeah, I'll be posting updates. Cool, cool, cool. So it's called inf Infinitude. I don't know how you say that word. Infinitude. Infinitude. Yeah, it's called Infinitude. that. I, just made, I like got it Infinitude. from like, yeah, it's like a, a synonym of Star Wars. And people, and a lot of people are saying, oh, it's just Infinity War. But I'm like, okay, yeah, it kind of is, but still. Yes, and it's yes, Darth Vader, thing. I will try to draw you. Your armor It's seriously hard to do, <clears throat> but yeah, I will try all right, who wants to end the show? On the show. Uh -oh. All right, all right. And broadcast, click. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. <done. laughs> yeah. All right. That's that.
Uh, thank you all so much for watching uh, Movie Madness Entertainment, where we get a yep. little uh, entertainment, and we get a little mad, and we get a little movies, and we do the thing. A little. With, with the thing. And uh, thank you all for being mature and polite and professional and courteous, as always. We love all of you. Uh, when you all act up, we still love you. Oh, okay. Shit. Um, <laughs> But thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe on your way out the door. And we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.